You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. Here we go. Oh, Roof, you got a different hat on. I didn't even see hmm. that. I switched up on the Gupalini. Gupalini. You turned the heat on? That's on. It's over. I got the fire going, baby. Oh, the pellets? No pellets. Wood. Well, wood, baby. Wood, wood gives me wood. Oh, wow. All oh, right. Well, welcome oh, back to the Get Salty Experience podcast. Brett Weir, yep. you say? <laughs> what? Get Brett Weir, I said. Hold Brett on. Brett Weir? Back. Who? What? Yeah. Oh. Is he playing it? No. What? Well, look at. I just want to just say one thing. Now, Petey. What? Well, he's, he's very, very ill tonight. So well, he, was, he wasn't feeling good. He had the tissues. He was coughing and everything. And then yeah. he found out that the captain has his own shooting range. <laughs> and shoots the slide with the 19, and he's got the 223 two, with the uh, vampire front thing that he was talking oh, about, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And look, 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 look. <laughs> now, now he's all, oh, oh, he's got to talk. All of a sudden, yeah. the, I'm yeah. making yeah. you fucking laugh, you jackass. 10 minutes went by like this for him, you know what I mean? He's yeah. like, oh my God, we got the, the show's got to start. You know, 10 minutes that my eyes were glazed. The captain's over. a man. Like this. I what? told him I only had a thousand rounds, like for the Armageddon. He's like, dude, what are you talking rounds. about? Like, you know, thousand rounds. I got 2,000 is, uh, you know, minimum. Yeah. So I told about John's Petey. Petey popped a little wood. Boing! <laughs> yeah. Boing! That's what happened when Pete started talking about his guns. guns All of a sudden, good. he had a gun over here. You pulled one out over here. You pulled one out over That's here. Right. He pulled he it over two here. in the back. He had the, the, the guns one. Guns are good, yeah. okay. We yeah. all by, any, by any chance, is the squadrumentary under the, any of those guns over there? Yes. Or no? yeah. not? <laughs> it's definitely it's under is them. It? Exactly. Yeah, it's probably under a pile of shit yeah. somewhere. I don't know where no, that went. I know one thing. My beard will be like I've been working on that. I've been working on that fucking thing diligently, guys. It, it will it will be dropping soon. So there it is. Define it like diligently. Define diligently. The Every dime. day I do a little bit on yeah. it. Yeah. Are you yep. buying that refrano? Uh I'll have a beard like down here by the yeah. time. Uh... I'll be calling you ZZ Top by the time <laughs> I put that on. <laughs> keep, Look at his face. We keep pushing it. and you'll He's never fucking it. see it. He's got it. He's on it now. That's it. He's got yeah, it. Now all of a sudden he went from such a happy mood to like Yeah, yeah now we'll 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 in the mood for your what shit. Are you, so what are you drinking? Is, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Me? What are you what are you drinking? Tea? Well, me, I got a, I got Java. What are you drinking over there? No, not you. The other guy, the guy who's sick. I'm just drinking some it's lemon got tea, water. tea with lemon. Water with lemon? with lemon in it, actually, not even tea. Uh, I you better fucking... do something about that. It's good for uh, your vagina. Oh, bro, it is. I, I, you, know, you know what, man? It's, what about I'm coconut really gonna, water? You're not drinking any co- you? I'm really, <laughs> coconut I'm really, water, right? No, I'm really fucking freaked out about my immune system, <laughs> especially yeah? uh, especially after the coerced uh Oh, my God, jab. here we go. Because it's been increasingly – I've been getting my – you sick all the time, increase. though, bro. Yeah, he is sick a lot. I don't, I don't know. He is sick a lot. Yeah. I'm really he's freaked out. Wear, he's I'm, I went for a physical. I was supposed to go get the results today, but you can't uh, go to, go in there for today. But I couldn't because I'm like I was really laid up. So. QC said Coops will have a lot of hair when the squad entry comes out. <laughs> 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 yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nope. nope. His beard might turn back. To you know gray, what, QC? That for that comment. Yeah. 2024. Uh, That's when it comes out. <laughs> Stack up. Huh. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, let's let's get out. We got it. I like this guy right out the bat. Right, right out the shoot. This guy is good. I told. I would call this the unfiltered getting salty experience show. Because mm-hmm. this man ain't got no filter, which I love. You know how I love that, right, bro? No mm-hmm, filter. Mm-hmm, Hard mm-hmm. charging salty mf'er we got here, and he likes guns, so Pete will stay awake for well, a while. Besides, Which, besides yeah. that, I like, I like guys who are raw dog and they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, won't get them slumped you, over. Be, oh, what? Wait, what? Pete, put the picture up. What? Wait, what picture? What? Who? What? 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 Oh, oh, it's a, oh, it's a seventeen into nine slide. Oh, let me get that picture. Hold on. Oh, yeah. All right, so we got a hard charger. This is the only. Only podcast in the whole wide world that brings a firehouse kitchen table to you with all the hard charges. Uh, Pete put that thing up. We got some really salty guy coming out, coming soon. I, don't, I forget what you said his name is, but salty, salty. We got a lot of candidates. We oh, waited through them. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got Chief we, Jonas coming on. He's going to do the triangle. Yeah. Uh, yes, fire. we do. I'm yeah. not going to uh, say the name, the day. but uh, there mm-hmm. was about 10 of you guys. Uh, when I put out, and, uh, and I'll tell you right now, if you guys have someone that you would like to nominate to get on our show, 
Uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, first of all, there's a few rules. So go to the getting salty fans page. It's pinned on there. Uh, you got to know the guy, you got to have his contact info. If you don't, don't even talk to me. I don't give a shit. None of us care. If you can't get us in contact with the guy, nobody cares. Right. Uh, you know who we should get? Oh, who? Cat Morris. Oh yeah. You got his number? Nope. Oh, nope. okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know what I want to do on Thursday? We're going to have you a little you Christmas. Get? We, we, uh, you should get what? JC. Jesus Christ, you ever hear of him? Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. You got his number? Nope. No. 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 I go. have his number right here, bro. Right up here. Uh, you know what we want to do on Thursday? We're gonna, we, I made a mistake. We don't have uh, Chief Leave. I, I messed up the dates. So we're going to do a, a, a holiday uh, cocktails and cockloafs. So uh, this is a little idea that Pete's going to say we can't do. But I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Send your questions in if you have any questions along with the email. And we will let you answer, ask your questions in person. Pete will pull you up out of the backstage, ask you questions, and then off with you. So if you want to get on the show, if you got a good question, not a stupid question, don't waste my time. If you got a good question and you want to get on the show, send it to Coops Pass with your Coops Podcast at gmail.com with your email, and we will get you on the show on Thursday for the holiday show. I like that. All right. What else do we got to do? Oh, Chief Lee has said he may come on in the new year. QC what? Beast. Yes. You didn't tell me that. Yes, I did. I put it in the yes, text. Yes, you did. Thank okay. you, Pete. It's old news Thank already, you. Lou. Where you been? I, mean, I don't really read the text, of the group chat that we're in. I don't really read it. Yeah. Because it's no. usually Coobs yelling at you. So I don't no, really get it wrong. It's usually, because it's usually, you, you're usually hunting. Right. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you're away somewhere. He's, he's usually on hiatus somewhere, so he can't get it, you know? And they tell you it's all right, but it's really not all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It's my favorite you game. Fox. Uh, fine. You're not really fun. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, uh, right, pay the bills to get this this dude pay the on. Bill so we can get. Uh, you can't call him Captain. You got to call him Brian. All right. We're bit. gonna get Brian in here because he already corrected me. I told yep. him I was raised right, so I always tell people until they tell me otherwise. Call people by their uh, rank. And he did. Uh, okay, so guys, you know the deal. We bring you the best mm -hmm. sponsor in the, in the game, always, always. And tonight, as always, we bring you New Jersey Fire Equipment Company. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygenol, Fire Hooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Groves Gear Racks and Washer Dryers, SuperVac Fans, RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com. All right. Yeah, excellent. All right. So, a couple quick things. Uh, Darren Phillips, thank you so much, <clears throat> Canada, uh, in the super chat. Also, Hal553, we appreciate you. Uh, there was someone in there earlier. Hold on. It's Justin Davidson. Thank you as well. Uh, he's He mentions that uh, those curtains could keep Lou warm for days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not a lie. All true. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. really quick, guys. You know, it's Christmas week, so we're not. We're, I don't know if you guys can ship something out uh, to make it to them by Christmas, but uh, we, like, we can uh, ship it out. We can ship it out. You cannot do engraving, so please don't send me a note. Uh, my my husband's a fireman would love to get this by Christmas, even though I'm ordering it today. No, that's yeah, a it's big Monday. negative. 
nah, Christmas yeah. week on Monday, guys. We've been warning you all week long about what nope. you can get on GettingSaltyApparel.com, where we yep. have the coolest firefighter apparel and accessories in the game. You have tumblers like this one here. You have hats like the one Lou's wearing, T-shirts like the one uh, Mr. Kev's wearing. We got playing mm. cards. We're going to come up with some poker chips soon. Yeah, uh, Lots of cool stuff at GettingSaltyApparel.com. Also, guys, uh, I already thanked a few of you guys, but in the super chat, we appreciate all – and any of your uh, donations, thank you so much. That's how you guys are the like for the show. It keeps things going. And um, honestly, you guys are our number one sponsor. So thank you for that as well. Nice. Look at this guy in here, man. He's well, like, in he's hey, about to like, he's haul off and crack he's someone's sleeping? jaw. You know, like he, he looks pretty, he looks like, you I know, actually he's, drink, he's drinking some moonshine is what I can see. Oh, uh, yeah. I call him there the captain that don't take no shit. Bring him in here. It's not the uh, captain. It's Brian. Please bring him in. Brian. Captain Brian or Brian Emenecker. And there oh, he Cap. is. <laughs> Other guy with good hair. Son of a bitch. And yeah, guns. He's not just he's got guns, guns. He's, he's got, got the, guns. Not just these guns. He's got the. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 It's right to the bathroom that way. Yeah. Uh, Muscle Beach. You, that you bringing way. guys on here with a lot of hair on purpose, Roof? Is that what you're doing? We're trying to insult <laughs> me? Is that what you're doing? Mm, Could be a possibility. Right. Yeah. What's up, Cap? How are you? All right, how guys. Are you, how are you guys doing tonight? Welcome to this thing that we call a show. We appreciate you coming on. Well, I really uh, appreciate you guys having me, man. I yeah, really but do. Pete, let's before we get any further, we got to do our patriotic duty. Even though uh, Susie's not in the chat, screaming like nah, a mad. Man. We don't do the, we don't do the pledge because of Susie. We do it for Susie and everyone else. Uh, we still yes. live in the country called America, even though we don't have a legitimate government. Government, ladies and gentlemen, the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Great job. And Frankie Supt there. Frankie Supfin is in the chat saying hello to Ooh, Brian. Frankie, uh, Frankie, that's my Frankie's boy. Good dude. Oh, he's a great. Boy. He's a good guy. What nice are you doing, dude. Frankie, you wrenching on a tr on a car? What are you doing, Probably, buddy? Probably right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Frankie's Always. the one who made this right behind me, this kitchen table. Yeah, Frankie he's made. he. Frankie's he's a really, really genuine good man. One yeah, of the best people we have in this show. One of the I best. Pete, let's do the uh, drinking game. What do we got? What's oh, the word of the day? Okay, do very it. quickly, very Come quickly, on. so we can finally get into it. Uh, you guys know the deal. We play a little drinking game on the show. It's called the word of the day. Whenever you hear the word of the day, you will hear a little air horn uh, sound effect, and uh, you will then uh, have a little sip of whatever you're drinking at home. We try not to inundate you too much, so you could, you know, you could still stand. But anyway, that's how it works. <laughs> hey, the word of the day is. The Alley Cats. Alley Cats. Beautiful. Squad 7. Never yeah. heard of it. All right. Squad 7, Squad 7. He did uh, <laughs> He did mutter a little um, a little uh, JV shot at us before. He did uh, throw a little JV in the pre-shot. He pre did throw the JV. That's all right. I'll get him. I got him. I got a couple things. You got a couple up. there? You got to yeah, pepper yeah. him up a little bit? Let it rip, baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let it rip. <laughs> all right. Let's, get, let's go back to the early days of Captain... Brian, uh, so it says you started as a volley in '84. Is that where you grew up? Is that where you're from originally? Born and bred in? Uh... Uh, uh, no, actually, the whole family's from Camden City originally. I was born in Camden City. Uh, our family settled in Camden City in like 1857. Whoa! Wow. Yeah, so it goes all the way back. Camden City, you know, was an industrial giant back in the day. You know, a lot of industry, as you you know, northeast, typical northeast city, right across the river from Philadelphia. Um, Campbell Soup was born there. RCA was born there. New York Shipyard was there. Laid keels for some major, you know, wartime vessels. Um, but yeah, my whole family's from there. So I was born there. I didn't. I didn't grow up there. Uh, I grew up in Cherry Hill, which is about five to ten minutes, depending on where you're at. Now, let's say 10, 15 fifteen minutes outside the city of Camden. Um, and I grew up in that town there. And I grew up right up the street from the firehouse. The local volunteer firehouse was like three doors up from my my home. Um, you know, it was a working class neighborhood and, uh, you know, they had a big tower out there with a beehive siren on the top of it. 
And when that thing clicked on and started screaming, man, when I was a little kid, <laughs> I would literally run out of the house, you know, four, five, six years old. And just and I could name you the rigs that were pulling out of the firehouse now to this day. And, really? Uh, yeah. So that's how much I it just sucked me in. Was your dad a volley or anybody no, in your family? No, no, my father. No, my dad was a union electrician for 42 years uh, at IBW. And um, I had an uncle who was a volunteer fireman in the township of Cherry Hill, but on the other side of town. So back in the 70s. So it's Especially just the, the fact 70s. that you were on the block there that, that you started. I'm sorry? And the, it was just that you were on the block and the firehouse was on the block that yeah. you started. Your, yeah. Your and it, you know what it was, Lou? It was like the typical neighborhood firehouse. Growing up, you know, once you became like 15, 16 years old, it was like everybody, Went you know, there, yeah. I shouldn't say everybody, but mo so many dudes joined the, the local firehouse. And uh, I tell you, man, you know, my entire career, if I, I – it's a debt that I cannot repay from where I started from. And, you know, that town grew exponentially over the years, you know, in population and as well as, you know, growth in terms of structures and, you know, infrastructure and stuff. And uh, they always had career firemen, but it was just like during the day. They would have like four guys during the day and then, you know, supplemented by the volunteers. But back in the 70s and the 80s in these towns, the volunteer ranks were incredibly strong. You know, you would run down the street and like trip your buddy to get on the rig before he did. Now today you can't get anybody, right? No, so you can't get anybody. no. And, you know, right. you're looking at, you got families that have dual income households. You got, you know, right, 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 kids right. involved in all kinds of crap. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, so, yeah, you know, but I was just. Um, <laughs> trip your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I was just, I, I was incredibly blessed. I really was, man. From where I started, it just, man, the guys that I, that taught me, um, I can't repay that. I really can't. And I just, and they're all, they all ended up being, you know, the nucleus of the Cherry Hill Fire Department. As time went on, you know, they consolidated districts and these guys were all, you know, just absolute studs. Now Cherry Hills, you know, it's one of the, so it's a decent sized fire department. It's a big town. It's a 30 square mile town with a transient population of like 350,000. Hmm. So, you know, but, um, what was pulling know. out of that firehouse? Would you have a pumper in there when you were? Yeah, there? there was, there was a 1955 Ford. There was a 1968 Horn. Holy there was a 1947 midship convertible with France ladder that would pull out of there. Oof. And there was a 1964 international crash truck that would pull out of there. And then they had a, like a bread truck, like a 1972 or 73 bread truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like final truck. But, uh, it was just, man, you know, it, it's, you know, I lived a little boy's dream being a fireman. And I think that we can, you know, I, I really, I don't, I have really never met a fireman that. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's love, love what things. they did. Yeah. Right. You know? So, but, uh, but yeah, where I started at, the guys took it very seriously. It was not a, I mean, you know, we had plenty of fun. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, when the bells went off and it was time to get on the rig to go, you know, do something, they, they were very, very serious about the skill Goodness. sets, the trade. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I can't repay them guys. They know who they are. They they are my mentors. They are, you know, I, I can't, I wish I could find the words to, to thank them as much as I could. Did, did a lot of those guys uh, or any of those guys end up doing what you did, like going to like a bigger city uh, fire department or most, did they stay there most of them? Um, my, my, one of my best friends, Andy, him and I went to Camden city. Andy got on like probably like a year before I did in Camden city. Um, but no, we were the only two that went to the city. Um, and, uh, Yo, well, that guy. became a paid department, though, right? Cherry Valley became. Oh yeah, a Cherry Hills. Valley. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cherry Hill, right? Yeah, they're a, full, they're a fully paid department. Yeah. Um, and you you got on the paid, right? When they I consolidated. Did. I did. Yes, I did. And, and that, that was, was in, uh, that was in ninety four. Right, ninety four. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I was assigned I was assigned to an engine and out on the west side of town, which was a good thing because I spent my entire volley career uh, on the east side of town. So I got to the other side of the town. And, you know, different, a totally different infrastructure, you know, with some high rises, mid rises and, you know, things like that. A lot of commercial buildings and, you know, the road network was a lot different over there than it would be on the east side. Uh, east side was a lot of the bedroom community. Uh, I guess it would be you could refer to it like a Queens. You know, right. it would be a lot of, you know, 
Cape Cods and cookie cutter kind of houses. Mm-hmm. Like that. Um, great spot to be, you know, but they had a lot of major arteries in terms of road work, the turnpike, 295, 70, you know, stuff like that. But, um, so but yeah, you doing extra, extrication too then? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was, that was the great thing about, you know, in Cherry Hill, even as a volley to, you know, up until I left was, you know, the training that you were afforded to go to was just, it was never no. They were like, yeah, go, go ahead, sign up, go. So I, I just sunk my teeth into anything, you know, and I really gravitated towards like the, the technical rescue applications and stuff. I really enjoyed doing that kind of stuff, like the rope and the, the water and all that kind of stuff, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, I just main, you know, not just maintain those skills, tried to hone those skills into something that, you know, that hopefully one day I could, you know, then bring on to someone else. Right. How does it actually work though? How do you go from being a volley to all of a sudden getting paid? Like, well, to- you know, what was happening was it was just the town was growing so big in terms of population as well as infrastructure. And, you know, the, the, the call volume, the call volume just, you know, started, you know, shooting. It was just shooting up through the roof. You know, I mean, I remember when I joined in 84, I think if, if we did like 650 runs a year, we were like, oh, you know, we did pretty well this year. Now those companies over there, they're averaging 1500 runs, you know, 1600 runs per unit, you know, maybe more on some units, you know, right. is there still a volley part there or it's all paid now? No, I, you know what, Lou, I, I, no, I don't think that there is not a volley house there. There may be like an organization, you know what I mean? But they don't respond. It's totally to all paid now. Yeah. Yeah. They that's have good. like a canteen, um, you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, and, and let me tell you something, man, you want a canteen to show up. That's the canteen you want to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Burgers, yeah, steaks, yeah, ribeyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got a whole menu right there. Right? Yeah. So, uh, that's funny. But, yeah. So, but it was, uh, you know, I, I've, I've gotten, um, you know, like when I retired, you know, and you, you sit back and you kind of re- obviously reflect, but, uh, oh, yeah. and I talked to some of my really just dear friends that were just, that meant so much to me. And, um, you know, I, and I, I may, I got a loud mouth and I run my mouth a lot, no. stuff, but you know, a lot of the new Pete, but you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But uh, it's just because I, if I believe what I believe in, I'm going to stand for it, and I'm not. God going bless to, you. you know, I'm not going to black uh, back it down. And these guys, you know, I, I broke down like a baby with some of them because they just mean so much to me. And uh, it is funny how you don't, you don't, know, yeah. when you're going through it, you don't realize it until you're done, and then you look back and you see Man. how special your time was and how wow. who, who was special to you, right? And who, yeah, it I really mean, is crazy. It, it, that that there, Lou, is like, uh, holy cow. Uh, the emotions that run through you, you know, I mean, again, like, you know, we, we lived a little boy's dream. I mean, <laughs> dude, you know, I was riding the fire, we're riding fire truck, man. You know what I mean? Yep. We got freaking lights and sirens. It's like Johnny Gage and Roy DeSoto. You're like, you're cruising <laughs> down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And, and it's like, dude, like. And then they put me in charge of that. Yeah, I was the right. guy in charge of the whole. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, yeah. that's scary, bro. That's the frightening part, right there. Get out of the way, you son of a bitch. Yeah, and you know, it just man, and it was just it. it it's something that I was just by the grace of God that I was just so blessed to to be able to do, you know, and and love every oh, freaking God. second of it. And uh, yeah. it's not it's not a career, man. It's a lifestyle. It really is. I'm a firm believer of that because I've heard that quite a few times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all may have had the different patch on our shoulders, but at the end of the that's day, the we're, we are brothers at the end of the day. Yeah, and, you know, thing. that's a term that should not be used loosely. And yeah. when guys use that, you know, you fucking better mean it. Yeah, you know? we, we realize that from doing the show, from meeting guys from all over the all over the world, really. We're all the same. It's just amazing. Like you said, it could be different patches, different yeah. ways of doing certain things. But yeah. at the core, we're yeah. all the same, man. Yep. Really. Yep. And, and we're uh, all thankful to be a part of this whole thing. Part of it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and we, I mean, you know, we could sit here and we could go down all kinds of rabbit holes. And, uh, you know, the fire department is not the fire department that you were in when you guys got on. It's not the fire department that in when I got on, you know. Uh, when I got on, you know, in Cherry Hill, I had guys that were just their hands were the tool. You know what I mean? Like this was the computer, which is the best one on the fire ground. And their hands just they were so talented. Like you yeah. could put anything in their hands. 
they'll, they can do it. You can put a machine, they'll, they'll run it, you know, um, drive an apparatus. There was guys that, that were driving apparatus that I grew up with that I was like, good God almighty, man, how yeah. the hell is this guy wheeling his rig like this? You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and just learning from those guys. And then, you know, as we go on with the show, you know, getting into the, into the city was just, holy smokes, man. You want to talk about, you know, that's what I want to ask you, Cap. How many tests did you take? What, oh. what what cities did you did you try for? All right. Well, I went. I tried for Philly. I did Baltimore. I did New York. I did. Wow. Uh, you had a sickness. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. Let, me, hey, Lou, let me tell you how sick I was. I actually took the NYPD test too. So I took NYPD in 1989, and I got called in 1993, and that Jeez. was yeah. So that was before they had. So when I took the test, that's when they had the different departments. So they had city, transit, and housing. Oh, housing. Right, yeah, you know right, what I'm right, right, right. And the, when the list came out, they had the bands. So if your test score was this, you were on band this. If your test score was this. So I was on right. band one, and my list number was like 4,075, you know. And uh, my investigator was a detective out of the 2-6 uh, in Harlem. And, uh, you know, he, he tried to make it so freaking difficult. He was like, you know, you got to be up here. And it's like, all right, dude, I'll be up here, whatever. Just tell me when. You know, I, you know, I don't give a fuck. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Thank God you didn't get on that job. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I mean, did any yeah. other departments call you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I did candy. not. No, I did not. And uh, let me tell you, man, and I'm glad you brought that up, Coops, because if there's if there's a number of things that I could, you know, relay to people tonight. <clears> and <throat> one is this, you know. And I'll tell you, man, there's firemen out there and you guys out there, you better fucking listen to this. And I'm not the fucking expert and I'm not the Einstein about it, but I'm telling you something. You motherfuckers out there, you walk around because you've never failed. You have never failed. And I'm telling you right now, the one day that you will fail, it's coming. It's coming. And when you do, you don't you don't know how to react. I've done more failure in my life. OK, from mm. trying to live a dream. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And it was devastating to me. Devastating. To a point where I was like, this is not going to happen, you know, and but I just was like, you know, I just got this retarded mindset where I'm like, dude, I'm, not, I'm that's a wall. I'm going through it. I'm not going over it. You know, it, I it, tell it, my it, kids all the time. It's how you all, you got to fail at shit. It's how you respond you have to, to failure. To, you know, it's how and, you respond and, to the failure. Yeah. How do you respond? Right. Yep. How do you respond? And I've run across, you know, dudes that were in Camden City that were just like, you know, like fucking strutting around like peacocks. And that's like, motherfucker, you you don't know what failure is, man. You don't know what failure is, you know. And when they do fail, you're gonna cry like a little bitch. You know? <laughs> so. I told you this was unfiltered, baby. I love it. Yeah. So the best the best quote I've ever heard on failure is by a guy named Sam Beckett, and he goes, "Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better." Yep. And yep. that I think is the the most apropos way so, to do it. I got a, I got a, a number of friends in like the special operations community within the military, and, and the gig I got now, I'm actually working with a lot of the guys. But um, you know, the bottom line is, you fail when you quit. You fail when you quit. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't look, man. Pain's temporary. Pride quit is forever. Is, quit is your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Interesting. I got to write that one down. Well, it's five dollars. Ten percent. I'll give you ten percent. Right. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. All right. Yeah. So after Cherry Hill, you get called for. Wait, I think because I wrote this down, you get called in ninety. I get on the job and I get. We get a notice in ninety six. Right. And they're like, you know, uh, in typical city of Camden fashion. Oh, hey, here's your letter of intent. You're going to become a fireman and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's not, it's like November of 96, December, something like that. So I'm like, you know, you know uh, and now I'm like, you know, freaking ready to rock, right? Let's go. Yeah. And uh, yeah. next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, we got to wait for the next fiscal year. So that's January. 17 then, years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the job, Cap. <laughs> hey. Well, by the way, where'd you get all that gray hair at? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, so we got on early 97. Our probie class went in early. There it is. Yep. There, there. Now that's Look just the blonde hair, the pipes. Look yeah. at him down there in the left corner. Yep. Wesley and, Pipes uh, over here. Yep. But um, <laughs> those guys there. So that's that's part of the class. We had 32 
in our class total. And uh, how long was your academy? It was uh, 16 weeks. Okay. Yeah. Any of those guys still on the job? Uh, yeah, there's a few. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yep. Nice. Yeah. A couple of them are battalion chiefs and, and if not, oh, damn near the rest of them are all captains. When you, How many guys um, are on the job? Oh, sorry, Petey, go ahead. I, no worries, man. I, I was going to say, do you remember anything from the academy, a lesson that you learned at the academy that still sticks with you to this day? I've always been meaning to ask that of everybody. Dude. Yeah, man. Shoot, um, tell us. And it was it was said to me, like, so when I got on the job, and I'm sure, like, you know, Lou and Coops, you could probably uh, appreciate this as well. So when I got on, I was, again, just – Man, so, so fortunate, so blessed because the men that were on the job, the old timers, right, they, they were all Vietnam veterans. And I'm talking dudes that fought, that fought, that were in some serious, serious shit and serious units. And, uh, you know, they do, they do a, the tour in Vietnam and then they come home and fight the urban war for 30 years. And right. um, so anywho, we're down at the academy and, you know, these guys pull up, they, they would bring a company down there, you know, when we were doing, you know, operations and stuff. And you would see these guys get off the rig, man. And to me, coming from obviously the fire service, I was the only, maybe I think one other guy was a volley, but I was the only guy that was actually on the job. So it was 31 guys and a dude from Cherry Hill. And um, <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, so there was a captain and he was a uh, hard nosed, um, no nonsense guy and uh, a, a Marine. Uh, in the ninth Marines, the walking dead that were in Vietnam and they did not have a good time over there. And, um, man, he came up to me and he shot me in the eyes and he said, this ain't fucking cherry Hill kid. And man, I was like, no, sir, it is not. You know, he said, well, you better fucking make sure it ain't, you know, and that stuck with me. Um, because, and you know, yeah, I, I understand with the eyes. Yeah. And I understand what he was doing and I'm, you know, grateful that he did it um and let me tell you man you want to talk i mean i was so happy that i was in proby school and, and going through it and everything so I was, again you know the dream had come true um but you know i i had this nervous nervousness and excitement about it was a nervous excitement that was culminating in me mm -hmm. the entire time because you know okay i had a decent reputation at cherry hill you know as fireman but you know okay that was there you know now i'm here and now I'm going to go to fires like on a daily basis, you know, in less than the desirable buildings, you know. Um, so, you know, it was like, OK, man, it's three two, bottom of the ninth, man. You're in the box. You know what I mean? So it's it's game time. And um, so I just, you know, did what I normally do, sink my teeth in as deep as I could with it. And, you know. All right. Came just, how, how old were you, Cap, when you did when you were doing this? Uh, when I got on, I was 24. When I was in Cherry Hill, and then 20, I just turned 27 when I got on hmm. in Camden. Hmm. So. Now I always do a little research on Camden. Uh, it was the first career service uh, fire department in Jersey, and one amongst the oldest in the United States. I didn't even know that. Yeah, we're only like uh, four years younger than you guys. Yeah, I think I and, remember uh, that when we had uh, what's his name on. Oh, that guy. Uh, what's his name there? Uh, uh, rhymes with uh, Eckert, that guy. Yeah, oh, Eckert. Bobby. Oh. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, if you wanted to know history, Bobby's the guy. Bobby's a walking encyclopedia when it comes to the fire department. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he was knows, buffing he out. Was, he knew all yeah. that stuff. He could yeah. just boom. Come yep. right out. So what? Good. What point? Because that you know that that at one point was the murder capital of the, of yeah. the U.S., wasn't it? So yeah. when did that? When did that city go into the shitter? What happened? All right. So you know, typically with cities of comparable size in the Northeast that were major industry footprints for the country, um, you know, they fell flat on their ass in terms of economics because of the flight from the city to the suburbs. So the, the decline of Camden City probably started really teetering down in probably like 61, 62. And uh, by 68, you know, they had their first That's the year, man. That's yeah. the year. And it is right. That's basically all across the country. That's the year, man. Yeah, from yeah, we '68 on, you know, they opened Hell's Door. You know, yeah, well, shit. <laughs> and After uh, that, man. Yeah. So my wife, her father was a Camden cop. He was got out of the Marines and got hired <laughs> in Camden PD during that time. Um, 
you know, during the, those war years. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, like early 60s is when the economic, you know, engine really started to sputter in Kansas City. And then it just, you know, the floor fell out of it. Oh, right. Yeah. What's it like there today? Is it, uh, has it there's, no there, there's no timeshares. There's <laughs> uh, no timeshares. No, I remember, I remember Bob saying they still have a lot of vacants there. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, my goodness, you know, man, at one time, I think the, the, there was an excess of over 3,000 abandoned buildings in the city. And the city's only like 10.1 square miles, if that. that. That's crazy to us because yeah. we went from vacants. Even if I got a 93, there was vacants, right? And then to no yeah. vacants. Even right. in the ghetto, there was no right. vacants, nothing. Yeah. There was no oh, like, total regentrification. Zero. Right. I mean, yeah. not, not yeah. you know, you can yeah, have. So that's that's what I was saying. Why didn't Camden ever come back? Um, corruption. Bottom line. Corruption. Yeah. Political corruption is, is you know, I've, I've said this and I'll say this openly. Uh, you know, I wish the fellas were running the city or I wish the fellas were running the country right now because you know what? They do a better job because the politics, <laughs> politicians are just a bunch of, you know, pieces of shit as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, tell, but wait, yeah, just, uh, tell us how you really feel because I don't think we really <laughs> nailed it on that. That didn't come that's across, a, Pete? No. <laughs> no. That's a whole other show, Pete. <laughs> you and I need to talk after the show. We've we got do. lots to tell to you about. Yeah. So we didn't even get, we're, we're half hour in. We didn't even get to a fire story yet. Yeah. All right. right. I'm, I'm all right. He's got, he's got an interesting doing? life. What do you want to tell I, you? I'm not I'm saying sorry. he doesn't. I'm just saying, you know. All right. So you get hired at your ladder two, which is a busy a busy truck, right? It was. Yeah, two truck was a south, it was a South Cannon ladder company right on Broadway with eight engine and the third battalion, and uh, so it was a, it was a tiller. It was a 1986 Hawn Fire Spire tiller uh, with a power assist um, tiller, and it was a really excellent truck. Uh, it could really manipulate itself through the tiny streets and the you know densely populated neighborhoods really well. Um, you know, the ladder, the main wasn't the strongest in the world, but you know what? To, for the application that we had, it, it, it did a very good job. It really did. Um, you know, and then we had a spare tiller with a, with a freight liner tractor and a 1974 uh, trailer on it. And I can't remember the, the manufacturer, but it had gravity outriggers. You know how you would just kick them off. They'd swing yeah, out. Swing and out. Come straight down. Would, yeah. 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 But uh, we had that there. And then the tiller wheel on that was like the size of a hula hoop and hard as a rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, Did you uh, have a but lot yeah. of six story jobs there, or, or was it like two, three story jobs? Yeah, it's like two, three story, yeah. you know, ordinary construction to frame. You also had your mix of uh, ordinary constructed uh, commercial properties, you know, all turn of the century stuff, you know, from like where, where two truck and eight engine were on Broadway. That used to be referred to as Butcher's Alley because South Cam was all Italian back in the day. And then you had North Cam, it was Irish, East Cam, it was German, where we were from. Then you have Pollock Town and all the all the other, you know, like any other city, you know, you have yeah, your, yeah, yeah. your neighborhoods. So, but uh, yeah, two truck. It had a very very large local when I got on the job, and it was it was great. I mean, man, you know, when I got there, I was like, man, I'm in two truck, man. And uh, the first day I walked in, I went to the back door. You know, I get there around six thirty in the morning. Roll calls at seven, and uh, you know, I knock on the back door. The captain opens up the door. Says, hey, kid, come on in. Welcome to two truck. You know. And, Come in and uh, I put my gear down and I stood in the corner and I didn't move. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the kitchen and I'm seeing I'm looking at the kitchen table. And there's about four guys sitting at the kitchen table. And, you know, it's like your old man back in the day. He's got the paper up and the cigarette smoke. Is just <laughs> and, uh, and he don't even know you're there. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. They may know, but they don't care. Yeah, yeah, know? exactly. And, exactly. Uh, so. You know, and then this this one guy, Donnie Detweiler, God rest his soul, he he puts the paper down. And he's got this uh, backwoods like cigar hanging out of his mouth, and he says, "Were well, you going to introduce yourself, or are you going to just fucking going to stand there?" <laughs> so, and I, that's you know, and I introduced myself to everybody, and you know, uh, made a pot of coffee, and you know, and I didn't sit down. I I, I just was you know. Yeah, I was just not, you know, I had those butterflies were, you know, cruising because yeah, it was yeah. like 140 years of service of like five guys, you know, and dudes that like, I mean, you, you're like, man, if I could just been a fly on his shoulder, you know, and, and go to and see what this man has seen, not just and just in life, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so that's that's where I was at in two truck. Um, I was on the third platoon. 
And um, ask him. How many, how many guys ride? I'm gonna ask him. How many guys riding on the rig in, in two trucks? We had we had four four firemen and an officer. Oh, that's five good. total. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's and the rigs look. The rigs don't move. Like we can go down to four firemen, but it, like for an officer for overtime, it's all captain for captain, chief for chief, and then for firemen, you know, firemen for firemen. Right. And so, so they, back, they backfill. So cap or Brian rather, um, uh, as you ask us to call you, I have a picture of you here with two truck guys a little later in your career when you were mm -hmm. hanging with them. But I figured since we're talking about two truck, if you would want to talk about their shot, it might be a good time. Yeah. Um, so these guys right here, uh, you know, I, I can't, um, I can't say enough about them. They're, uh, they're the best. And I didn't want to do this, but. Oh boy. That's, That's all right. That's all right. But they're they're the best. Those guys. Um, who are they? Who's who's there? Who's there? Who are we looking you at? You called them in the pre-show. You said this right here is the nucleus. They are. They're the nucleus. They're they're Spartans. Those guys are just absolute warriors. And and you know what, man? And like I I said, I, I you know I can run my mouth. I can be loud and all that. But you know I'm a I'm a big you know marshmallow at, at heart. And same um, here, brother. These guys here. You know, Elmy's to my left, and then it's Huggy Bear, Greg Turner, and then that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what we call him. Yeah, Love it. and uh, Joel Thompson, and then Orlando Torres on the end there. And Orlando, he he was the I was the first guy in the fire department Orlando met when he came on the job at Eight Engine uh, when he was a proby, and wow. we spent we spent our entire career together on the, on the third platoon um, in that first battalion, and. Um, I tell you, man, you know, these fellows here, the the, the work ethic, the commitment of duty. Um, I mean, you can tell, you know what, man, you can always tell when you got really good men. Look at the smiles on their faces. You yeah. know, this is this this is like, you know what, man, whatever problem that we inherit, because as firemen, that's what we do for a living is inherit people's problems. Mm. And whatever, how vexing the problem is, every warrior wants to leave their mark on that problem. And that's what these guys did every time they went out the door. And you want to talk about anticipation of operational movement. There was never, they knew they're riding from their riding position to the fire ground. It was a symphony. It just was bing, bang, boom, boom, boom. Let's go, you know, and, you know, fire floor, floor above, rear the fire building, you know, ladder up, whatever, you know, there was nothing, nothing that I, you know, Full trust. it was, it was. And, um, I mean, Huggy Bear, like, so we would all, you know, we had a really nice gym in the firehouse that Campbell Soup gave us. And, um, so we, we used it, you know, every tour and Huggy Bear in the middle there and Elmy to my left. I mean, they're like freaking goons, you know, so they got like 420 pound bench press. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I mean, the, the running joke was like, oh, here comes the goon squad. The building's going to get removed now. <laughs> and, and Joel uh, right there next to Orlando, Joel, his brother Frankie and I came on the job together. Frank's a captain at 11 engine and him and Joel, Frank and Joel, the two brothers, they're Thompson brothers. Uh, and Joel now is a captain at nine engine. And um, they're probably some of the best athletes I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. And you want to talk about a competitive edge, but I think – I've always said when I'm out lecturing or even when I talk amongst firemen, even my friends that were that weren't not firemen, they would say, you know, what makes a good fireman? In my opinion, you know, it, it's it's, you know, this whole sexy thing about leadership now and all that bullshit. And, um, you know, it's it's what's here, man. It's not only what's in your mind, but what's in your what's in your chest, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's that commitment of duty, but it's not the commitment of duty. Look, we're all going to be. You know, we're locked up. We're brothers, right? We're going to fight. When we go out the door, we're going to fight. We're not going to go out there and, you know, pussyfoot around. It's a fight that we're getting into. And, you know, these guys have this mission mindset of, I don't care what's in front of me. You know, the people are number one. I serve the city of Camden. I serve the, the populace of the, of the city of Camden. And, you know, I used to say all the time that, you know, you give me a guy who's an athlete, a tradesman, or a, or a military guy. Oh, I'm boy. telling you right now. All of them. If you get right? all three in one, That's forget right. it. All, totally. all three yeah. in one, forget about it, right? You, you got a you got a monster, a monster That's company. It, baby. And uh, you know, they have that that just that unity and the work ethic. And um there was just no there was no stopping them. And 
you know, like well, I you said, know what the thing is, Cap. The reason why they do that, <clears throat> and I always felt the same way. You're you're doing for them, right? They want to do for you, right? They want to make you proud. Those guys, right? So really, that's the whole the whole thing is you're being the leader that they want, right? Mm. If you yeah. weren't, those guys wouldn't do those things for you. Yeah, right? I, I so, mean, they have the, the pride that these guys have. And that's you know what, what it is. It, it is. It's, I've noticed I noticed that when I when I was a young fireman in Camden with the the guys that I came on with, I said, you know, these are guys that just come right from the street, know nothing about the fire department other than, hey man, this is a pretty good gig. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. over time, I watched these guys and I would see them. I'm like, man, look at the heart. Look at the determination and the commitment that these guys have, you know. And you, and I, I, that's the one thing I miss is is seeing the look on the on the men's faces in times of, you know, challenge and the de- determination that they have on their face. And like, no, we're getting this. We're getting this. And then the other times when you're in the firehouse, or, you know, wrapping up on the fire ground or whatever, and you, you know, you see the smile on their face. You know, yeah. and that and you guys could say, yeah, I miss getting on the rig. And sure I do. But I really miss seeing that accomplishment from those guys, even when we had the bad ones, you know, where we where yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know we, what I mean? Where we couldn't. Yeah. But um, you know, that and that's what it's about. They really took the oath and you know, to, to what it's supposed to be. You know, it's, I used to call that Disney World cap. Yeah. It was Disney World. I could my guys would do anything I asked. Anything. I want to go to China. Start digging, but you got to use your teeth. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, start digging, yeah. you know, they'll do yeah. anything. Yeah, that, and, that that's, uh, makes me the most proud. And right? it, 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 what I, I'm telling you, man, it just re- like here's another example of those guys. Like one night, it was like it was late, you know, like maybe two in the morning, and we got hit out for a real serious wreck on the highway at the base of the Ben Fra- or Wall Whitman Bridge, which is one of the two suspension bridges between us and Philadelphia, and. uh so the walk is south. So we're going down there and, you know, we pull up and it's a mess. There, there, there's shit all over the place, all over the highway. And the trooper comes up to me, he says, I, that lady in that car, I think is dead. I think she's DOA. And this car was mangled and the other car, the person was out of the car, no big deal. So we go to work. We start cutting this car. Well, the, the PTO takes a shit on the rig. So we lose all hydros, right? I don't, I, and talk about the anticipation of operational movement, right? My Orlando was the operator of the rescue. He was the driver, the chauffeur. I turn around and he's already got two gas pumps out on the ground. They're running. Bang, bang, boom. I shit you not. Maybe, maybe 30 seconds went by before a tool was not running. And they bang, bang, boom. And turns out the lady in the car wasn't dead. You know, she was still alive, you know. And uh, so that's I've watched. I've seen these guys do. They're exceptional people and they perform exceptional duty. And, you know, the one thing about the Camden Fire Department, you know, we can get ripped on a lot about certain things and rightfully so. But the one thing that people can never say about the, the members of the Camden Fire Department that are worth their weight, um, they got more fucking heart and more desire, and more grit than, you know, people I've ever met. And I've seen men do some extraordinary work. And uh, I was just incredibly proud to have that patch on my shoulder and, you know, be alongside of them. So, Cap, two things. Uh, one, I know the level of uh, of badassery that I'm dealing with here with you, uh, based on the badassery. fact of, of, like of, of, of how humble you are. That ten how bucks much, I gave and, you it goes a long way. And David. how well and how well you speak about your men. That's how we know who the fuck we're dealing with here. That's one. But two, we have a good question that came in here from Freddie C in the uh, in the chat who apparently knows you, he says, yo, Cap, how about the one when you were new on the job and the woman came running into the firehouse to tell you there was a fire down the street and how the captain reacted? Oh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> he's trying to think quick. Oh, no. No, Can I say it, this or not? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a classic. No. So, and, and so we're on the Avenue, which was uh, where the rescue was. And I was just transferred to rescue. So I was a new fireman over at rescue. And so when the people would hit the doorbell, you know, you would just throw the second floor window open and look down and be like, you know, yo, what do you want? You know? And, uh, you know, so one day <laughs> with doorbell. Up? Now, if it was a fireman, you know, it would go ring, ring, ring. And that would be, you know, you're a fireman. <clears throat> and then obviously if the civilians, it was like ring, 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 ring. And then they'd hit it. Right. So. They hit this fucking bell. I get up, I get out, you know, I go up to the window, I open up the window. Now I'm not looking to my right. I just look down to the street and there's like 15 or 20 people out there. And there's this, this 
young lady that lived across the street from us. And we'll call her Angie. And uh, Angie's out there in the middle of Kane Avenue with no shirt on in the middle of summertime. And, you know, let's just put it this way. Gravity was really taking control of everything. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, of the anatomy Gary. <laughs> and uh so she's she's got about one tooth and it's just a shirt show, right? so she's jumping up and down and she's like yo b yo b i said angie what's up she goes there's a motherfucking fire down the street and just as i turned my head i was like holy shit there's a fire down the street. <laughs> There's a big fire down there. There's the a big <laughs> the captain. The captain comes out of his office. You know, he was like, you know, taking a snooze or laying down. And he comes out. And it was, the captain was Mark Kogut. And uh, God rest his soul. And what a wonderful man he was. One hell of a fireman. And a great, great man. Uh, he comes out. And he was just one of those. He was like a Jim Mignatowski from Taxi. He would come out and be like, what's going on? What's up? You know? And I'm like, no cap. I said, we got we got a humdinger down the street, man. This place is off. He goes, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a perfect analogy of the taxi guy. Yeah, right. That's a perfect like, thing. I'm like, all right, well, nothing's you know, so, shaking him, right? Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, the other guys are, you know, they're coming out, like, what's up, B? I said, dude, we got a job down the street, you know, on like uh, second K or whatever it was, you know. And then all the bells are dropping, you know, and and the captain's like, you know, who, hey, hey, Brian, how do you know? I said, what happened? I, I go, well, Angie hit the button. He goes, oh, you mean the broad over there with the boobs down to her knees? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when we pulled out, when we pulled out of the firehouse, you know, we had to pull out and, you know, like, like, like you guys, the guy had to, you know, hit the doors and then jump on the rig. And the rig we were driving that day was a reserve. It was a 1977 Hendrickson. It was a reserve rescue. The thing had a defender on it. If you got hit by it, forget about it. You're just, you know, you're part of the paint. And um, so we're pulling out. Now we're in like the street. We're waiting for the dude to jump on the rig so we can go. And you, can, the fire is only like maybe two blocks down, and it's blowing, man. It's like, it's like probably a twenty-five by seventy-five middle of the road commercial property hammering. And uh, Angie's like, want to get on the rig with us? For the one tooth. Yeah, it's you can just imagine. You know, it's like, Angie, come on, baby. You know what I mean? It's not going to work today. You know, so. But Did uh, the alley cat want to get on the rig? Hey! hey! You guys, we're getting parched. They're, they're getting parched. Good Dave. one, Rosie. Good one. Yeah, All right, so tell us. Uh, you know, before we get to that other question, I had to ask you: How long are you in two trucks before you catch your first? Okay, job? so in Camden, Camden, you know, when I got on the job, at the, <laughs> when I got on the job, it was uh, Camden. I think we had about two hundred and ninety-five to three hundred guys when I got on the job, and because uh, we still had other, you know, companies, they closed companies since then. But anywho, um, so I and I had that the background of the tech rescue and blah blah blah, and. Um, so real quick, I'll bounce back. So I got a I got a phone call when I was still in the job from Cherry Hill by one of the deputies at the firehouse that I worked in because you know, they had all my information. And he asked me if I could come into headquarters that day. So, you know, we had five guys. So my captain was gracious enough. to say, hey, bro, go ahead. Just, you know, you'll be I'll be I said, I'll be back in like an hour at the most. And they weren't even going to send me to the academy because they were like, well, you're already on the job. You already have the certifications. So we'll just do some FTO with you. And I was like, no, 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 no. Because it's already 32, 32 guys and that one guy right there from Cherry Hill. So, <laughs> you know, I'm already singled out, right? So everybody yeah. already knew who I was. So I said, absolutely not, sir. I said, I, I, no, I'll go to I'll go to Proby School and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, and I did. But anyway, I get out and I go to two truck. I do about a year in two truck. And um, I get a phone call from Car 3, Chief Stinger. And uh, he was deputy chief. And my captain answers. He said, hey, yo, kid, here. You know, and I, I said, you know, he goes, oh, it's Chief Stinger. I'm like, the fuck did I do? Mm -hmm. You know, what the fuck is car three calling fucking me for? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, Chief, what's up? He says, hey, Brian, how you doing? I'm like, I'm um, okay. How are you? And he goes, oh, I'm good. I'm good. He says, uh, hey, man, you interested in going to the rescue? Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, you mean for like a detail? And he's like, uh, no, 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 permanent. I go, huh? And it's, whoa, wait a minute. He goes, oh, yeah, you're the last one on the list. All the other senior guys didn't want to go. And, you know, you're the last guy on the list. So there you go, Lou. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> and, uh, so, and, and, you know, and there I went. And um, so I stayed why, on the why same. Why did the other senior guys didn't want to go? Why, why they, would they, they want to go? 
they didn't they didn't want to do it. They didn't nobody wanted to do it. Right, they're in their um, house, they're, they're comfortable where they're at. They're, yeah, they, you know, they it, don't want to it, start it, learning all yeah. this shit all over again. Exactly. Like and you I'm and I'm talking at that time, senior guys that had like 18 to 20 years on in those companies that they were in. Yeah, and, they don't want to uh, that. Yeah, not they, always. Yeah, they it, it was a different different piece, you know, different kind of slice of pie there i mean we went it was great we went to every fire in the city every box in the city every car wreck that had been you know into a fixed object um so it was it was basically you're just a glorified truck company is what it is i mean that, let's be honest with each other come on so you know i i never you know i i would see guys in the rescue that had this attitude like well i'm in the rescue i don't do this well i said you're a fucking jerk off because you're a fireman and you should be helping everybody else out so you know, I didn't. I didn't like. That. I didn't. I loved being in the rescue. I loved going to all the fires that I did. But um, you know, there was a lot of uh, not just ball breaking. There was pure animosity. You know, towards that company because of the way some guys acted, and uh, you know, with their nose in the air and shit like that. And believe me, them guys ain't got no fucking business putting their nose in the air because they're turds too. So you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's what we say about Pete. Yeah, <laughs> we caught him oh, off man. guard. They said, "Wow, come on, man, come on, man." I got, yeah. Look here, two words. Come on, I got man. two words for you, Jack. Look here, man. Look here, <laughs> Jack. Man. man, if you don't vote oh, for me, man. you're, you're a talk. <laughs> Petey, show that pit. Can we talk about that one picture there that you sent us there, Cap? The one, yeah, that, man. Uh, Throw it up. Went, went around the world. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, hey, be careful now. You're gonna set the you're gonna set the internet ablaze again. Well, so first of all, let's well, I know let's one the, guy who would not be there. Let's see me. Uh, <laughs> listen, Pete. Thanks for your honesty, Petey. Yeah, listen. I'm not. I told you, I'd rather take fire than go into a into fire. You know what I mean? Uh, not built for that. Uh, <clears throat> not with my asthma. <clears throat> I got the black lung pop. My vagine, um, my vagine hurts. Yeah, I'm not into it. I'd rather get shot at. Um, so this is how the fire started. Yeah. Which look uh, young. Where, where are you working here? You're in the rescue here? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of what rig was out. All right. So at this point in the department, it, it the rescue and it turned into a fuck show thanks to the fucking administration that that's in there. Fucking spineless cowards they are. And uh, so anyway. That being said, <laughs> again, um, tell us how you really feel. I'm tired of you holding back on this show. Yeah. Um, oh so out, we were we were operating um, two truck that night, two truck. So you know, box comes in. It's probably like four blocks away from the firehouse, and uh, you know, we turn the corner. We're like, all right, man, good fire. You know, get the truck positioned, and uh, I get off. And you know, now what you what you don't see, like to my right on my shoulder here in the curb line is squad seven is stretching hose line. The fellows are just getting, you know, masked up, ready to rock. So I was like, okay, so let me get up, just take a quick peek, take a size up. You know, I get right here. I get on my knee, put my mask on, get my hood on, bing, bang, boom. And I always carried a Halligan bar. That was my tool of choice was I referred to that as a key to the city. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I jump up on the porch. I figured, okay, they got water. These sevens is freaking, these dudes are freaking meat eaters, man. They're going to eat this shit up like nobody's business. So this <laughs> fire is going to get knocked hard. So, you know, I jump up on the porch. I go to take a window out. By the time I put my alley bar <laughs> into the window, it was as if, yeah, man, the door's open. So we're just going to do what we want to do. And, you know, boom, it lights off. And, uh, you know, the, the the photograph heard around the world. Yeah. Well, now we start was, going into this. Yeah. <laughs> what is that this guy photo. doing up there? Why is he up there? He should yeah. be. Let me, can I ask you a question? Was it warm when you were on that port? No, I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> I, Pete, I want to be honest with you. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Hmm. Um, I didn't really feel that heat until I got off the uh, porch. Really? I, honest to God. Really? I, I, I swear to God. That's, that's when I that's felt bizarre. my right shoulder, my right shoulder. I felt the right shoulder a little bit, you know. Oh, that is some picture, bro. <laughs> and um, so, you know, like you guys said, you know, the, the dudes, when this was posted, and the guy who took the photo, he he rode with us a lot of times, and he's a great photographer. His name's Dave Hernandez. He's got a lot of great work out there, some excellent photos. And this is just, that just happened to be a second in time. And, you know, 
when this was posted, oh, the freaking he's rough Mary. his helmet. He's doing oh, this. He's doing oh, that. Blah, 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 blah. I said, you know what, man? You, you freaking turds. Yeah, you know, everybody's like, oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? I'm like, you know what, man? I'm actually going to go over to your mom's house for dinner right now. That's what I'm going <laughs> What's he doing? He, he's doing? He's doing the job that you hired him to do. Right. You know? You know? And, and, That's it. You know, it just it got to a point where I just, you know, first off, you, you know, you're like, ah, oh, fuck you, man. You get all pissed off. And then I'm like, you know what, man? Fuck these clowns. You know, they, they, they you know, you look into like, I, I started like you would click on their names and look into them. Like, look at you. This dude's like floating around on a river on a, on like a buoy where he, he himself is a buoy. <laughs> yeah, he's you know? like wow. 650 pounds. Yeah. One, and, one and two. It's like, you know, Oh, hey, brother. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I was uh, up there uh, doing it, Stephen. Yeah. I was doing it. I was, I was up there it, doing. Hold yeah. on. I got you. Hold on. Here it is. I was, do <laughs> I was up there doing, <laughs> up there doing it. So is I got to ask you, you know what? We get this. We, this is uh, no, the other picture is another fire. We'll go into All that right. in a second. But, you know, listen, man, let's deal with one thing. This We don't have to get too deep down the, in the weeds with this whole thing. But. You know, everyone who comes on this show, every single person for the most part, except for, you know, anyone who's more political, has said the same exact thing that you're saying. This person to deal with and these turds and yeah. all this sort of business stuff like that. So I'm going to ask you what you think. And this is a tough question, all right? But I'm going to shoot. Uh -oh. um, what do you think we do? How do we move forward in all walks of society you know, not just not just uh, not just in the fire uh, okay. uh, world. That's not a hard question at all. It's a very Shoot. easy question to answer, right? So all right. I'm gonna I'll answer this in like two, a two part thing. So the first part, let I'll, I'm gonna incorporate the fire service. Okay. Now, uh, quick story. I had a buddy. I was working with a buddy of mine. We were at a uh, paratech college. We were doing the, the tech uh, class. Tommy Gavin, who's a sweetheart of a person with the paratech struts and we were going, you know, just doing training. My buddy, Derek, uh, out of Philadelphia fire department, rescue one Marine Corps, first, uh, first force recon sniper. Wow. Phenomenal person. Just one of the most <clears throat> beautiful Americans you meet. Uh, you'll never, you would never know that he's that guy, right? Because he's just a, such a wonderful human being and a very humble man. So the quick story is this, we were on a lunch break or something like that. And we get to talk into this other guy that's in our group. And you know, he, he's a big boisterous guy with a big fucking gut. And he's sitting there and he's like, oh, how many years you got on the job? He asked my buddy Derek. And my buddy Derek's like, oh, I got eight years on. I'm Philadelphia, this and that. And the guy's like. Pff, pff, pff. So I said to him, <laughs> I go like this to him. I said, what's the matter? You got an air leak? Is there a problem? Hey. <laughs> That's my line, bro. So then he goes, he's like, oh, I got socks older than you that are on the fire department. And I said, uh, by the looks of you, you got fucking underwear older than fire. Do you want the fire department too, you fat fuck? So why don't you go off the recliner and stop fucking shoving hoagies down your mouth like a wood chipper and get the fuck and get the right thing going. <laughs> you know? So this is the thing, Pete. So this yeah, is brother. what bothers me, right? You're you're a, you're a occupational athlete as a fireman, mm -hmm. right? The public mm -hmm. demands that of you. You should be fucking in shape. I'm not. I'm not telling you to be an Olympic athlete, right? But you know what, man? You got a patch on your shoulder that says the fire department, but you also got another patch on your shoulder that has a flag on it, all right? Mm -hmm. And that fucking flag right there is that is drip with blood from people who sacrificed their young lives, okay? So you can do what you're doing right now. So motherfucker, you better toe the line. And that goes with civilians out there, too, because they say, oh, my feelings are hurt. You know what, man? I got one feeling left, and that's a zero fuck one. Okay? <laughs> and I don't care. You're right? all out of fucks. To <laughs> yeah, I'm all out of You looked in your pockets. You turned them inside out. You got <laughs> rabbit ears for your fucks. Yeah. Maybe some lint. At the <laughs> so you think – I, I mean, just, I, listen, I, I know the answer to this Brian for president. <laughs> I, I know the answer to this as well, but like, <clears throat> I, you know, I think it's a major cultural shift across the it board is. that would have to leak into the what areas of great disturbance. And here's here's the thing, Pete. And, and I, I thought about this today, and I'm glad you asked this question because you know when we got on the fire department, we were we were brought up. You know, you you were you were a young man when you get on the fire department, but you became a man in the fire department mm. because you worked with men that had this life experience more in this pinky. From, you know, whether it be a, a jungle war or whatever have you that they did in their life. But you know what? Everybody says we got to maintain the, the fire department and traditions of the fire department. Well, guess what? You fucking sissy pants. This is how it works. OK, you're a man. You're going to get treated like a fucking man or you're a grown woman. You're going to get treated like a grown woman. And guess what? If you didn't fucking do the right thing, you're going to get told. 
Okay. And if you don't like it, there's the fucking door. Quit your crying. Quit going to your fucking union and be like, yeah, they, they picked on me. They picked on me. motherfucking people's lives are at stake when you get on this rig and go out the door. Okay. And in society, okay, we're, we've, we've become such a, a soft society of feelings because everybody's like, oh, you can't say that. I can say whatever the fuck I want. You know why? Because that flag in the Constitution says I can. All right. So beat right. it. You know, if you don't like it, go away from me. Don't follow yeah. me. That's it predates, so the, the, you know, there's this thing, the Bill of Rights, it kind of predates Twitter and all the other bullshit that's out there yeah. right now, right? Well, yeah. I, I and, think and, you know, like I, I can remember doing a lecture and we were talking about something. And I get very passionate about it. And in, in particular, your fitness. Because, dude, it's not just the fitness in being a fireman so you can perform for the public and, you know, in that time of need, their worst day of their life. But it's also for you and your family. How many guys between Coobs and Lou, you know, that we know and myself from our jobs that are no longer with us and yeah. died at a young age? And my died brother so and my father. My brother, my father right? died at 57. My brother died at 60. Both firemen. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I mean, and you think about it. And you're like, dude, look, man, you're telling me that I can work out while I'm at work. All right. They're like, yeah. <laughs> you okay. can eat while you're at work. You can yeah. do everything while you're at work. Now, here's, and here's the thing, though. It's you very sleep easy. while you're at work. It's, it's very easy to get lazy in the fire department. It's very easy mm. to get lazy in the fire. And it shows. You know, you can tell by looking at people. And it's like, dude, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, well, Cap, that's, that's the difference. Yeah. That's, the, that's the difference is you can get lazy, but it's up to everybody, right, to keep – to toe the line, right? To keep yeah. everybody in check, to tighten the bolts. Like we and Coop say all the time, you got to tighten the bolts. Yep. I think what happened was, and again, I don't want to get too off topic because I want to talk yeah. about you, but in general, the fire service in general, everything was usually handled in the firehouse. Yes. If it, it wasn't handled in the firehouse, which 99% yes. of the time it was, you never wanted to go to the chief. Nope. Forget about no. going to the city. Like no. to go to a lawyer oh, in the yeah, city. You wanted to go upstairs to the captain. You I meant right. So, the men. So that's really where it's <clears throat> changed is nobody wants to take, you know, in, responsibility. Keep it in the firehouse, mm -hmm. right? To let it stay. Mm -hmm. What happens in the firehouse mm -hmm. stays in the firehouse, stays right? You yeah. handle this, right? So yep. now, first thing, first phone call is yep. past the chief, yep. you know, past the captain, past the chief. And there's no, know. and there's no ramifications for it. They're just like, oh, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, this is well, not the, the way we were wants, you know, most yeah. of the time. But I don't want to yeah. talk. Uh, let's not get too. Yeah. No, it was yeah. just more, you know, I'm glad you, uh, we touched on it only, Lou, just for a second, only because we always bitch about it on the show. And I'm wondering what the solution is. But you really. Now, look, you got the captain sweating. He's like, yeah, <laughs> Brian, thank you for that. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, Like bro. 108 degrees. <laughs> let's talk about. Nice let's job, talk Pete. about. Let's nice talk about. I just want to say one thing that he mentioned, bro. It's so funny, man. You said. There's a gym in the fire work out in the firehouse. I used to love the senior guys who wouldn't let the junior guys in the gym until they were there for a year. I'm like, yeah. just because you're a fat fuck sitting on the couch means that you can't let the pro be go in the gym and work out. Are you kidding me? What? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna lay there stuffing food down your throat, taking a nap and watching TV at the 24. But this kid yeah. can't go in the gym and That's can't even button. And at the point, can't even button your gym tour harness because you're a fat yeah. slug. Yeah. Nobody sleeps in the firehouse coops. Yeah, no, but rest, rest, <laughs> they rest between rest. runs. Right. So, okay, we got right, another really back to his career. good, and we also have a great photo here. So, what do you want to do for us, Coobies? You want to go into the career? Let's move him forward on the timeline. Right, so, so we got him. In, we got him in rescue one, <clears throat> right? Uh, how he how he allegedly got the rescue. Nobody. Bra, 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 bra. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you get to <laughs> now you get promoted. Now you get promoted to captain, right? You decide to study. You get promoted to captain in two thousand seven, but you stay in soccer. Yeah, yeah. I go. To, I go to the training division, and uh, they gave me, you know, to hey man, develop the training for you know the sock companies, and then the sock companies would be rescue and the squad. But then I said, well, listen, you know. I, at the ladder guy, you know, I need three truck because that was a tower ladder, you know, and that, that's an East Camden uh, ladder company. And it's always been a tower ladder, aerial scope. And it's, you know, in my opinion, you know, the aerial scope is the most versatile piece of equipment on the fire ground. It's, it's an elevator. You're bringing an elevator to the fire ground. And uh, so I wanted those guys. Plus, those guys in that company were fucking maniacs. You know what I mean? They were beasts. And... Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I started just doing some uh, – at that time, I was on the FEMA team for New Jersey. Before we were a FEMA team, we were actually a state team. 
Um, and I, you know, received a tremendous amount of training up there that was just, oh my God, the stuff I learned from the fellows that I met, you know, when I got on the team up there, uh, you know, from Jersey City, Elizabeth, Bayonne, North Hudson, Newark, these guys, man, just unbelievable people and friends of mine, brothers of mine for life and taught me so much. And I just, and I brought it home, you know, and, uh, as time went on, you know, we, we really, we, and then we started training with Philly. We, you know, we were really this close to training with Philly, which was, you know, an act of Congress for crying out loud. And, um, but it didn't, didn't go through because who knows, whatever. But anyway, um, I did that. And then, um, I got out of the office and they put me at eight engine and I was only at eight engine for, I wish I could tell you the timeline coops, but I was only at eight engine, not very long. Right. Not really they, they were with two trucks, right? Eight engine, yes. It? Yes. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, I went to, um, squad seven. They called me up one day, said, Hey, Brian, you know, next tour, go to squad seven. You're getting transferred to squad seven. And I said, well, time out. What platoon? They said, Oh no, same platoon. I said, okay. And that's where I had the guys at squad seven. That one picture you showed uh, a little earlier, uh, me and the fellows at squad seven. And, um, you know, and again, totally, uh, totally just, blessed and blown away by the talent and the determination of those guys and, and those guys there. Uh, like, so you got the, I, I mentioned Joel earlier, he's on the left, uh, my right. left from this picture. And then you got Tony Smalls to my right in the picture and then <laughs> Danny, Danny cyber. Uh, so Danny's a captain at sevens. Now he's been a captain for a few years. Wow. Joel, Joel's a captain at nine engine, Tony Smalls. Fellas, I'm telling you, if there's a guy, that God put on earth to be the, the, uh, you know, the leader of, for firemen that are coming on the job, a role model. Um, it's him. It's him. He, he is one of the most wonderful people. And I'll tell you what you want to talk about just a bad dude, hard charging. He'll pull so much hose line off that rig, that rig will rock in the street because we're advancing so much hose line in there. Um, I, I just, he is just a unbelievable human being. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal fireman. Uh, just a humble man. All these guys, again, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I just... I, I, I wish I could find, I stutter over the words because I just, these guys, I was just like, damn it. These guys are just, they're so good. You know, that the city of Camden's the, the citizens can rest easy at night. knowing there's guys like this that are ready to put their right. selves yeah. in a position. Now, how did you guys operate different from the rest of you? Obviously you have hose lines. So you have first, yeah. first yeah. Do, so, do area. What do you have? Uh, seven's first do was a large first do. It was very, it was the most densely populated area in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, so you had, a, uh, you know, a large first do you had the hydro tools on there. You had your spreaders, your cutters, your rams. Uh, you had some, you know, uh, mechanical advantages, some, you know, uh, descending devices and some, you know, a sked, uh, you know, some body packaging, you know, uh, halfbacks and stuff like that on there that you can at least get the job started with. You know, when I was at the squad, I, you know, those guys knew if we had something, on, you know, right away, hey, man, you know, we got to get the other boys out here because we can't. You know, right. we don't want to mess around with this. You know, one thing fighting fire is one thing, but you know, you guys know in the tech rescue environment, that's a more methodical step by step operation as opposed to, you know, just going in and getting it. You know what I mean? Right. And now did you operate as a truck as well if you pulled up? Yeah, we did. If if we were to, you know, uh depending on what section of the city, if we were going to North Camden, you know, on a on a on a second or maybe a special call engine or whatever it have you, but they, we'd pull up and they'd be like, Hey Cap, you know. Yeah, you know, get above the fire floor, get to the roof and, you know, give me a hole or, you know, get a search done in the exposure building, check for fire extension and stuff like that. Right. Is there any slow companies in Camden? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there, there, there are like, you know, but you know what, Lou, because they, because they cut companies, the companies that yeah, were slow at one time, are, they're the busier. They're not, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it's, it's, you know, it's a sin, but, um, you know, you don't want to lose companies, but, uh, you know, I mean, not, no, I, I, I mean, in my opinion, no, like some guys, you know, cause their attitudes, they just think they're fucking holier than now. They're like, Oh, well they're slow. This one's shut up, dude. You know I mean? Yeah. You know, go, go, go back over there. You know, so but, now um, you, you were captain in the squad and the rescue, right? The I was period? captain in the squad. The squad's right. in a single house on, Ooh. on, on KS. Nice. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I was going to say contrast, Ooh. contrast good and bad between being in both. Like, give us a little bit of differences between being in both. Well, um, I, I mean, I, I, I just enjoyed the, uh, the truck company work, you know, um, so much more, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's like, oh yeah, but I'm on the nozzle and putting fire out. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm the same yeah, way, Cap. I'm the that, same way. That, that, the knob it, is the yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, but I just always loved the fact that, you know, my buddy Ange would always, him and I would have these talks, and you know, you know, when you're in the squad and you're or the rescue and you're pulling up, in particular, like let's say the rescue as opposed to the squad. And I don't want to use the term freelance as something that needs to be done, but you know what? You almost had a license to freelance. In other words, you know, we're pulling filling the, the gaps. Rest. We're filling gaps. Exactly right. So, you know, we're operating as a truck. I mean, let's be honest with each other. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're getting to the fire floor, getting above the fire floor. And my my thing is with the fellows that I said in the rescue, I said, guys, listen, man, when we're pulling up and there's hose lines that are going into the fire building, what's the one thing you constantly hear from the guy on the nozzle? More line, more line. Yeah, Dude, help them with the line. Just pick, pick up the line, line up. Right. Pick pick it up. The line up. Give them the two, three, four more feet that we can obtain more square footage and forward progress of extinguishment, you know, and we're going to get this, you know, and that's how we got to do it. And then go off the line and go do your thing. Cause we would split up, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd have my guys split up, you know, and, those little um, things like that too, Cap. And I did that in the squad. I felt like I always did that, but mm-hmm. those were the little things that people <clears throat> see. They might not say it, but they see it. You know, we always, I would have to say, Coops would, would agree with me. If we went to a job, unless there was something coming in, if it was a good job and there was a lot of hoes, we would we would help them. If Absolutely. a job came in, we were leaving. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. We would help them. You know, it yeah. doesn't take anything. Again, you're just standing there. Everybody's doing the same shit anyway, mm-hmm. right? You're just exactly standing right. there. And, and, you know what? and that's the thing, Lou. It's like, you know, I could that happened many times. We, you know, we're picking up hose line for whether it be the four inch or, t- you know, two and a half inch, three quarter. And, and, you know, we'd help guys. You know, like, okay, you know, my dudes would help dudes up. and They'll see but, you do it. And then they the, the radio would, hey, you know, they would call the battalion on the fire ground. Hey, can rescue one free up? And then, you know, he would look over at me. You good? I said, yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, there hey, you rescue go. one, take this in or something like that. Of you know, course. you got to go. You yeah, know, absolutely. So. Pete, hey, pull up the uh, the uh, amazing, what was that? Was that one tour, 24-hour tour? The July third oh. tour. Let's let's yeah. when he finally used a fire wipe. He had a fire wipe on his <laughs> body first. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What is this? Oh, this feels nice. Oh, it's a this fire feels wipe. nice. Yeah." So um, walk us through this. You should, day. Get, you should get the audio for the audio files for this. One. So this the this uh, if I can quote uh, Chief Marini, who was our chief of our fire department uh, some years back, who. Uh, you know, in my opinion, was a, a good fire chief, and he's a very good man, nice man. Uh, this was a banner day for the Camden City Fire Department. <laughs> um, so this weekend alone, I think I think the total was like maybe twenty one or twenty two all hands fires in the weekend. And this is a Sunday, and we had I think it came out at the end of the end of the tour, maybe maybe thirteen, something oh, like that. Shit. So, I'm, and here's the thing, like I'm working a swap with the captain of rescue one on, on one platoon. Okay. So he's down the shore freaking hooting and hollering and doing all this. <laughs> right? and, and next, you know, and, I and love then, that. Uh, Catching work the, on, the, on a mutual. The dude, oh, the dude that I swapped that. with, like, he's like, um, he's like the tackle barrier at police Academy, right? He's like, he's like, Guns, where do we get the guns? Where do we go? <laughs> you know? And the next thing you know, fire? where's the fire? Where's the fire? Yeah, like he gets this phone call and he's on the beach and he's like, Yo, dude, the city is absolutely burning down and you're missing all of it. Next thing you know, he's like, You know, he's like blowing a head gasket, right? So we're going, we go out, we sit down for like a breakfast, you know, and boom, we get hit out for a car wreck up on the highway. We get up there on the highway and this dude's, you know, he's pretty banged up, compound fracture of the foot, blah, blah, blah. We cut him out of the car. We're good to go. Next, you know, we turn around. We're coming down, you know, back down highway. And uh, they're like, all right, you know, take a box in, blah, blah, blah. Next, you know, I was like, oh, there it is. You can see the column. So it was like, sweet, you know, bing, bang, boom. And uh, so good fire, good fire on the second floor. Uh, and my buddy, Ann, she's working uh, overtime at 8 Engine. They pull up, stretch hose line. We get upstairs. They knock it down. You know, we do our thing. Just as we're wrapping it up, hey, Rescue One, you available? Yeah, we're good. All right, take so-and-so in for a house fire. And then, dude, it was just domino effect after that. It was insane. And the the cool thing was on the rig, so the average age on the rescue that day 
was like 51 years old. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I had I had this guy. I'm exhausted uh, already. <laughs> you know, I, it was it was really unbelievable. So this I had a guy, Lacey Phelps. Um, he's retired now, and he did like 30 years in, in the on the job. His dad was on the job. His brother was on the job. So Lacey, um, he was you know that was his regular tour, and just a fucking you know hard charging fireman, good man. And um, so next, you know, long story short, we're 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 down to one air cylinder on the wine rack in the rig. Mm-hmm. And we blew through like 25 of them. Wow. Uh, we just went from fire to fire. You know, it, we literally bounced around. So what was happening, a dude was running around at like the eight, eight block area, lighting off abandoned buildings. And there was one, one fire that if it got hold of this row, we'd probably still be out there because it was, <laughs> we, we were like, so holy shit, if this got a hold of that row on Haddon Avenue, we're working for the parking authority right now because we're going to make one, you know? Um, but then that's what it was. A guy apparently was all bent out of shape because something happened. The city didn't do something. Next thing you know, he's running around for two days, lighting houses on fire. And, you know, and then when it was like, everybody's like, yeah, yeah. And then like by the next morning, Eight o'clock in the morning, they were like, "Yo, they caught the guy." And it was like, mm. ah, that's <laughs> ah, good. "I don't like that." <laughs> but you know, just the, and, and I'm talking like these were good fires. These weren't. This wasn't a little you know room of contents. You know, you're pulling up the second floor is going from front to back, or you know, you got a three room burnout or something like that. It, it's a good. There were good jobs. So, but the men just again, you know, w- when I'm looking at guys like you know Lacey and Lacey lays concrete on the side. So it's like he's not doing – the guy just constantly works. He's a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those guys and, can keep working. Yeah. Not, they don't get yeah. tired. And it's you're just like, man, dude, These I'm just in all these guys. They're fucking unbelievable, you know. And uh, it's just such a privilege and honor to not only know them, but to really spend that quarter of my life with them and, and you know, and, and be in those positions and those scenarios and uh, share our families and, you know, our time oh, yeah. and our lives together, you know. There is uh, – so, we talk about that, I mean, many, many times about the sweet spots in your career where, you know, it's, it's not the whole career if yeah. you do enough time, yeah. but there are there are times where you look back and, you know, probably like you with the squad or rescue, whatever, you know, wherever. There's these little couple of years where you're very close with the guys. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's doing the right thing. Right. You're yep. catching work. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's just a perfect. You know, it's just, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, that's a perfect yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, and, and yeah, we we could say yeah, I miss those parts of the jobs. But you know, to and again, just to reiterate, I to see the, I loved seeing the looks on the guys' faces because you know, and and again, like you said, Lou, you know, there was a lot of times that those looks on the faces weren't good. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, no and, doubt. You know, they're 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 them them scars that we carry around as as you know firemen and stuff like that, and you know, um, you know. But again, I didn't sign up to do this job to to you know sit on my ass or not a giggle fest yeah you know and uh Mm. it's you know you took an oath man and you know that's what it's about i i think that that's so rare that people you know they took an oath like you know think of every politician that takes an oath right you raise your hand you swear you know like it just yeah let's get this knocked out of the way so i can go to my lunch Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but but you know like you got to think about that uh for real. Like I have a friend who uh, her husband's an FBI guy. And I was, I was like, Oh, you know, like uh, you took an oath. Right. And uh, he's like an accountant though, a forensic yeah. accountant. And she's like, yeah, yeah. I took an oath. And I was like, you carry a gun. Yeah. Yeah. I have to carry a gun. Even being a forensic accountant. I was like, so you're yeah. a fucking warrior then. He goes, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't call myself that. I was yeah. like, you carry a fucking gun. And then, and, and the thing is with that though, Pete, it's like take it into the fire service. And, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, staying in shape and, you know, working out because the public deserves that response from you. Now, I've seen plenty of guys that look like absolute freaking studs carved out of granite that are the biggest pussies in the world. 
they fall you apart. I mean? um, you know, I mean, they're, they're, again, I call them outstanding firemen, always outside standing around. And, and, <laughs> Excuse me. And all show, no go and all this oh. stuff. And it's like, it's funny because you'll watch them. They'll, they'll, they're, they're walking on the fire ground real fast and they're moving around and they ain't doing a fucking thing. You know? They line they're up though for the fucking. calendar photos. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. They call that busy work. They do a lot yeah, of busy work. Busy work or the air pack shuffle. Like, oh, my air pack. The now, air pack like, shuffle. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? It's like, dude, you're wearing a fucking Scott pack, dude. Are you fucking kidding? I literally one day this kid was like, my air pack ain't working. I said, well, you give me yours. Here's mine. <laughs> Dude, what, what was the video, Coops? We, we've talked about this a few times. The video where there's a woman hanging out the window, right? The smoke's pouring out. She's on the first uh, floor. The smoke's pouring out of her head. There's a guy, a fireman, yes, quote unquote. Yes, he's yes. like getting dressed. Like he, he's got to put his mask on. He's putting his hood on. He's doing his gloves. Yeah, yeah. yeah hold on. I'll be right with you. Some dude, <laughs> some dude with a fucking guinea tea comes over, dives in the window, throws the woman out the window, jumps back yeah. out. This guy's still futzing around with his, you know, gloves Look, and his we, flare clay. I, I get, I get, I got a, I was working overtime at Nine Engine one day. I, I literally put my gear on the floor. We get hit out for a, a motor vehicle accident. And it turns out that it's a motorcycle versus a parked car. So oh, we yeah. turn the corner and there's a That's massive good. crowd during the summertime. So you can imagine what's going down. We get there. This dude's bottom half of his leg is gone. It's gone, right? But I get there, and I'm looking down. I'm like, this guy's not bleeding. And there's a tourniquet of a belt on this dude's thigh. So now I'm like, there's no EMS there yet. So this guy's, like, pretty stable, man. He's just like, you know, nothing we could do right now. We're waiting for EMS to get there. So I'm looking around, and I look over on this stoop, and here's this old time. And he's just sipping on his 40. He's got a white tank top with a little bit of blood on his chest. And I go, so I walk over there. I said, hey, my man. I said, how you doing, bro? He goes, hey, baby, how you doing? I said, uh, I said, uh, put that tourniquet, that belt on that guy, did you? He says, yeah, man, 69, Vietnam. This, and I oh, said, no, Sweet. yeah, dude. I said, man, if I could sit down and have a beer with you right now, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. It was just, I said, dude, what a unbelievable man and he cool was cool cat, right he was yeah. cool he wasn't nice, over there man. patting you know? himself on the back nope. he wasn't over there you know let me spell my name for you nope. this is what it is for nope. the paper yeah, you're gonna call action shit. news for me and this and that yeah and there, and there and there lies that other thing too it's like you know i i would put guys in for you know awards and stuff like that and i would never i, I never put my name on anything and um and I and look if there's Cam and Fireman listening to this right now you can go fuck yourself because I never put my name on anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know. the, the city I used to work for, all yeah. you fire, uh, man, all the FD you. in my city, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> now I got a question for you. Um, from the from the uh, chat here, what was the origin of the name Alley Cats? Oh, that's his patch. Oh, right. where was it from? Where did it start? Yeah, from? they're asking where it, where it started from. So the firehouse, it, it's it's a single bay old firehouse. It's over 100 years old now. And they re, the, the fellas redid it. It looks beautiful upstairs now. It's gorgeous. And it's a single house, so it's a, it's a deep house. But there's an alley next to it. And there was a ton of cats always in the freaking alley. There you go. And, uh, you know, scream, and which I can't stand. I can't stand fucking cats. And I can't stand <laughs> them. Yeah. Are they still in that firehouse? Yeah, they're still in that firehouse. Yeah, yeah, they were out of it for they were out of it for like two years because the floor collapsed. Wow, the apparatus floor. Yeah, the apparatus floor collapsed, and uh, so they they got it all fixed up. And then uh, the fellas on all four platoons there at seven, uh, they got the whole upstairs redone with money out of their pocket, and uh, it's beautiful. The brothers, yeah. yes, yep, just beautiful. They took the they really did, and um, you know they sent me pictures. My buddy Gabe and she sends me pictures of it, and it's just it's beautiful. It's such a great you know, uh, they did such a nice job on this firehouse. To, and it just, and it honors the guys that, you know, walked that wood, you know, all those years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, the no that were in there, you know. Any and women on the job there, Cap? Oh, dude. Uh, we do. That. We do. Um, we had, our, we got, when I was captain of 8 Engine, we got our first four women on the job during that time. And I actually got one. I got one of the young ladies in the company. And uh, little Jenny, little Jenny on the block, that's what we used to call it. And uh, she's a sweetheart. And I'll tell you what, man. Yeah, I used to call her a little shipbird. And, uh, you know, we had some good fires together. And in the summertime, you know, 95 degrees out. And I can remember a job. We pull up and it's second floor fire and it's going good. And, you know, she got up there. And I, it's good. funny because you'll see dudes like senior guys, right? 
And, you know, they get on these probes. He's like, oh, you know, do this, do this. And I would walk in the kitchen like, who the fuck are you talking to? You know? And the probe would be like, oh, who wants – not you. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you're a fucking piece of shit. You've been a turd your whole career. And all of a sudden you're, you're giving a probie a hard time because, what, you're a senior guy? Let me tell you something about this fucking guy. All right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, you know? And uh, then, it, you know – it, I, because I look, man. Everybody was a new guy at one time. You know what I'm saying? You're already nervous enough when you're walking in the firehouse because you're walking into an institution. You know, you're walking into an institution that has been there well before you have, and it will be there well before, well before. you leave or after you leave, rather. And um, so, you know, be that, be that curator. You know, be that, be that positive person. And uh, you know, like you and I talk on the phone, Lou. Um, you know, we'll talk about it. I guess when we go to the uh, that one yeah. part of the, the show there, but uh, but yeah, I had I had Jenny, um, and you know again she That's did a great hear. job, yeah, and to she, she took it uh, she took the job seriously, and she went studied and did a lot of uh, work, and then went into the fire marshal's office, and she does a phenomenal job there. You know, she would come out and then you know investigate some fires and stuff, and I don't. Oh, that's, that's cool. yeah, 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 of course, I, I, yeah, but that's stuff. good. Yeah, yeah, but that's she's. She's a real sweetheart too. She's she's a very very strong woman. Um, she had uh, some ish health issues and she she battled through them. And uh, thank God she's you know she did. She's you know I, I, she's a very brave woman and she's you know she's got a special place in my heart. So very cool. Like Louie and I say, I don't give a shit what color you are, what you nope. got between your legs. I can give two fucks as long as you can do the job. Who cares? Right. Yep. When I go yeah. down the stairs and you're, you know what I mean? Because guess what? When you're in the hallway at three in the morning and, and I don't, you can't see me, I can't see you. Who gives a fuck? I, yeah, right. You can't see as me a anyway. Stupid, as a stupid fucking citizen, all right, who will probably be on fire someday because that's just going to be my luck. I don't care if you're a female pulling me out of that burn. fire. I don't want to fucking burn. <laughs> but it, that's what I'm saying. I don't care if you're a female pulling me out of the fire. Yeah. I don't care if you're just a sure whoever you, you are. Out of fire. Yep. As long as you yeah. can pull me don't out do the, the black fire. and white thing, just do the right thing. Mo hey. Richardson. That's my man. my man Mo used to say that. That's right. Do the right thing, man. And yep. uh, you know, and then hey. somebody said, Well, what's the right thing? If you got an ass and you ain't doing it. Right. You know what I mean? It, it's like your definition of right. It, it, look, the right thing is, you know, I Brian Emanek and blah blah, you know, do this, do this solidly, affirm, blah, blah, blah. I am now I, I took the oath before my family, my friends, and God, and I'm now on that line, I'm here, you send me, and I'm here for, so, and I'll coin the PJ term from the military so others may live. Mm. And, and that's exactly what we are supposed to do. And the other thing is, and, and I told a politician this one time, he goes, well, you know, first responders like you guys, I said, hold on, stop right there, dude. And he's like, what do you mean? I, he goes, well, you're not first responder? I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm a fireman. That's what I am. I'm a fireman. And these guys are firemen. And that young lady right there is fireman. Okay. I'm not a first responder. Okay, this bullshit first responder, what do you want to incorporate the person that called 9112? You're a first responder now, too? Why don't you give them a fucking medal? Okay? <laughs> and a pension. You know, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, right, right? it's coming. It's like, you know, it's like they want to include everybody. It's like, no, dude, this is where we lose the sanctity of the institution. This is where we mm. lose the foundation of the institution of fire department. That's the In first time opinion. I heard that, Cap. That's, true. That's a really like that. good point. Uh, uh, all, all institutions, you lose, the, you lose the sanctity when you start to dilute things like something is you think yeah. is as simple as a name. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it, it says fire department. It says fire department on the door, right. you know, and on the patch. Okay, right. it doesn't say first responder. You know what I mean? With a fucking band aid <laughs> or some fucking other shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you know, fuck that. Speaking and, of band aids, who does? Uh, e does this, did the squad do EMS? No, yeah. we didn't do EMS in the city nice. at all. Yeah, yeah, dude, wow. single house. Yeah. No EMS. Nope. Sign me nope. up. I'm in. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. yeah but you know what? Yeah. No, no truck work, Ruffy. They didn't. Uh, only once in a while they no, responded. No, no. To like the only right? you know, oh. we had a the, the, we had a level one trauma center in the city, and they have a EMS service for the city. All right, so they took care of all the EMS, and the EMS system in the city <laughs> does like thirty five thousand runs a year. It's insane. Yeah, I'm out right? right for the city that size, you know, and. So, you know, they would, you know, we had a good reputation or I'm sorry, a good rapport with the EMS people. They were great people. And it was funny because uh, they would call us out for like a, a lift assist or maybe get somebody out of the abandoned building that OD'd and shit like this. And, you know, and I'll never forget, man. And this was towards the end of my, my career. Uh, we pull up, we get out. And the, the one girl was like, oh, fuck. 
That's fucking internet. You know what I mean? And because normally I'm like, I get there and I'm like, all right, what the fuck's going on? Right? They're like, oh well, we got you know, we got a big guy, you know, that fell out of his bed. And of course, you know, oh, and look, man. I'm going to take the shot across the bow here at the police because I am. And you know, next thing I know, I look over and there's like four cops with fucking extra small shirts on. And, and I'm like, you know, nobody wants really? to lift nothing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so I look over at you guys. I'm like, you know, really, dude? Seriously? You're like, you know, you're walking around like you're, you know, Mr. Tough <laughs> Guy. And I said to the one guy, I said the one cop one time on the fire ground, I said, dude, I hope your mother knows you're out here because there's nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, dude, you know what I'm doing as I'm watching the, the captain here? I'm sorry. How, fa- how fast can we get him back on the show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, you got to have a call. No, no, hold on. There was somebody. Does the squad do BI? Do they do building inspection? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I'm not going well, squad. You know, no, it, no good. Does the know, rescue do BI? Yeah, we would do BIs. Yeah. Oh, who's out? Who's out? Well, <laughs> you're out, bro. Yeah. Well, listen, you, we, we, thing, we did BI and you didn't do it anyway. This, so what's this, the that's true. Good point. Good point. So, uh, year, years ago, back in. I did. I, I had wrote in a. Uh, like a PowerPoint program on abandoned buildings, you know, fires in abandoned buildings and, you know, things to look out for, blah, blah, blah. And uh, with the help of, of very dear friends, and I'll mention them right now, and mentors to, to many, many firemen in the fire service. One is Deputy Chief Mike Turpak out of Jersey City. Oh, uh, we had him on. Mike, I'll tell you what, man, how about that guy, right? What a um, guy. Well, no. Mike, Mike is a, um, you know, he, he's – a very, very special person, just a very, very good man. Uh, and has helped more firemen get promoted, get on the job and, and things. And I have other friends in the Jersey city fire department that are like family to me, uh, the Drennan family and, and stuff like that. Those guys are like blood to me. Um, and then you had uh, a guy that helped. So Mike helped me out a lot with the abandoned building program, as did James Smith out of Philadelphia fire department. James Smith was a, a uh, uh, the Northern commander who was a legend in the Philly fire department, James Smith, his son is chief of ocean city fire department down in the Jersey shore. Who's a uh, really wonderful person. Um, is he retired, it, this guy, uh, James, uh, chief Smith, unfortunately passed away not too long ago. Ah. Um, but he was retired for some time. He did like, I, I don't, and forgive me if the years are wrong, but he did in like over like 38 years, something in the fire department. Um, but you know, and, and if I could just touch on something real quick that, in one department, if you were to if you were to ask me, you know, what's one department that you really, you know, have the utmost admiration and respect for, uh, other than the Camden City Fire Department, the men that I work with is Philadelphia. Um, the Philly Fire Department, the guys over there, I have a ton of friends over there, and some of them are just some of my dearest friends. You want to talk about just the the grinding, uh, hard nosed Philly Philly man. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just, no, no. Man, and I break their balls about the salad bowl helmets and all that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, who do we have? Know, we had uh, what's his name? Was on with the they, salad bowl. He was breaking know, his balls with that. When, yeah, when yeah. you when you would hear a battalion go two and two in service, that chief selling them, man, you better put this thing out because I ain't fucking calling anybody. You know what I mean? Um, Hard nosed dudes over there. Phenomenal. And they're working with nothing most of the time too, right? Those yeah, guys were in back the in the day, they really it was they had such nothing. a shame. It really was to watch that fire department suffer the way it did due to cause of political bullshit, but. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I still think they have Adam Thiel over there as a commissioner, and he really, is, in my opinion, done a great job for that department. But again, it's only because of the members in that department. That department's a phenomenal. Uh, yeah. Just I have the utmost respect for those guys. They're they do hard, a shit ton of work, work, man. They do yeah, work. dude. Yeah, ton of work. Uh, great people, hard charging guys, and uh, you know that that that's. I just wanted to give them a shout out. Flyers suck. Nah, no. <laughs> Haters gonna hate Lou. Hey, all good. Hey. Yeah, you hey, can, hey, had if, a... if you told me the Eagles suck, I'd say yeah. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Enough. Yeah, I like uh, Twats. Twats is good. One guy had a, a question about the mischief night. You guys had that down there? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Camden obviously being known for their fire duty, uh, like a mini Detroit. Uh, back in 1991. Um, we had the hell night and it was 167 fires in, I think like a 12 or 18 hour period in the wow. city. Uh, it was worse than the riots that they had in 68 and 72 and 72 was a really bad riot. Um, so 91 was like a national thing. Everybody, you know, there's, there's actually tape that's out there of uh, chief Marini is actually down at the board and he's running the board and, and it's, it's epic. It, it it's, wonderful listening you know you get a couple beers and listen to him talk it's 
fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> like he's but, ordering a sandwich. <laughs> but the Hell Knights, you know, from '91 on, they, you know, they some of them were were good. Like when I got on the job, they were they were pretty. We still, had, you know, it was good. It was decent. You know, we, it wasn't nothing like '91, but uh, you know, we definitely had fire activity and enough to go around. Um, so yeah, but since, but not for a long, long time, Coops, as there've been, you know. Right. consistent work yeah yeah. So, yeah yeah i mean the consistent work is still there in camden city that will never go away um you know the fellows the brothers are still getting you know good amount of fire duty up there and uh they're still kicking ass so what was the uh precipice what made you want to get get out i mean you did what 30 i did 30? i did a total of 27 years a little over 27 years on the job <clears throat> total between the two departments uh-huh. and uh so you know, I owe everything, everything to my wife and my family. And, uh, you know, I would not be, I wouldn't be anywhere if it weren't for her. I wouldn't be a captain. I'd be just another sluggo. And, um, are those your three kids there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's smooth. Ah, yeah. He's smooth, yeah. Rufy. Smooth. You did it. I mean, we say it all the time. You, you, yeah. you, you, you yeah, married yeah, up kid. there, kid. But yeah, I did, man. I I really did. So, um, so what, what really it got to me. And so this is what happened. Um, it was probably, I think it was like maybe April, mid April of the year that I was thinking about punching out. And my wife had, um, we set up a, uh, an appointment for a, um, cosmetic uh, surgeon. She wanted to get a, a chest, uh, surgery done. And uh, like a lift. So we set it all up and we did that. And um, what happened was when they were closing her up, uh, thank God we went to the doctor. We did back doctor, excuse me, doctor back in, in uh, Cherry Hill. And um, he saved her life because when he was closing her up, he kept touching on this one spot. And the, the nurse was even like, what are you doing? He goes, I don't like this. And he cut it out, and left the suture there. And it came back as cancer. Holy wow. And um, this was literally like, as we were, punching out, you know? And, um, so obviously, you know, talk about a big gulp. And, uh, so, and my wife being the steel spine that she is, is, is probably the strongest person I've ever known in my life. And, um, so if you're like, all right, so all right, let's, let's, let's see what we got. Right. And, uh, you know, God being on our side and, and what it was is she only had to do uh, only, but she did like six weeks of radiation. She had to go there for like five minutes, get zapped. And that was that. She didn't have to do the chemo or nothing like that. But it was so small that the uh, ultrasound and the mammogram never picked it up. Wow. Because it was so small. So this doctor, because he's such a talented doctor, he he, he found it. And uh, to be. yeah. And um, so, you know, it was, you know, beautiful. And again, you know, the way that the way the fellas uh, stepped up and um, you know came to, came to us is uh, you know you can't. Uh, There's no words. No, what the brothers right. do. Yeah, and um, so you know, you know the, the fellows that I worked with, man. You know, from the time that I got on the job, the fellows that I learned from, and that accepted me into that institution, and. Uh, you know, and I learned from and, and had fun with and fought fires with and up until the time I left. So what made me leave Coobs was, you know, so many of those wonderful men that I learned from, they were dying, you know, and there, some of them were dying young, like 58, 60 years old. And we like you were saying, time, bro. You know? we don't yeah. have much time, man. I got shit and, to do. So, you know, as much as I love the job and look, man, firemen are a lot like caddy real housewives in New Jersey. We're going to come bitch and moan and complain about everything. You know what I mean? We do. It's just what we do. And, uh, you know, and I did a lot of that because I didn't like the way the men were being treated, you know, at, at, in the companies, you know, and then, so I didn't like it. And so I ran my mouth about it. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I owe my family time. And, you know, when I retired and I had all my buddies and all my brothers there and my family, basically, uh, you know, I was telling you young firemen, listen, man, there's, there's one thing we always want to get back in life and that's time and we can't get it back. No, nope. you know, so the time that we have, we have to, it's precious. And, you know, at this time, it is time for me to, to, to step forward and make that other chapter in my life because my family deserves it. You know, as a fireman, you know, when I, you know, when I got on the job and Michelle and I got together, 
you know, some years after that. And then I was, I got involved with the FEMA team and, you know, I'm the kind yeah, of person all the time. Yeah, man. And, you know, I really sink my teeth into something when I'm into it. And she was there for every step of the, every step of the way with support, raising two children and, and our son, he's a special needs child. He's a nonverbal autistic uh, child. So, you know, there's a challenge there. Um, you know, it's just in the, in the verbal issue, but, uh, you know, she is, uh, she's, the, she's the, she's the, the heart of my life. You know, she really is. And, uh, I, I can't, you know, of all the people in my life, it's like, you, you know, like I told you, Lou, I've had incredible honors in my life, you know, but the biggest ones are father yeah, yeah. and husband. When you, you wrote know? that in the letter that you wrote me, yeah, I made and, sure to um, put that in your, uh, Yep. Your uh, itinerary, yep. Petey, and, and, and not only does she go ahead, Cap. I'm sorry. No, and, and just to top that, it was just like you know, and I want to just who's ever watching the show and typing in or whatever it is is, you know, when it was posted up on social media, the Instagram and the Facebook, man, and you know, I I would see some of the comments and read through the comments that people would write, man, you know, and I I don't know what to say. You know, I was fortunate enough to be an instructor in the fire service for a long, long time. I worked with a phenomenal company with some of the greatest guys in the world in safety and survival training, LLC, out of, you know, out of Jersey, southern New Jersey. And, uh, you know, Danny and all the fellows down there out of that company, man, you know, uh, I love those guys to death, man. They're, they're, you know, they're the best. And uh, it's just the comments that you read. That people, oh, you know, Brian trained me and did this, or I was in a lecture that Brian talked about. And I had a guy contact me some months back. He says, yo, man, I was in a lecture and, you know, you made me, you put a fire in my ass. So I lost 60 pounds, you know? Wow. So, you know, they're the things. Yeah, you know? that's been happening for, for me and Coops. We say it all the time, like with the show now. Yep. That, you know, we get emails all the time. And when we, you know, Coops asked me to do this, uh, you know, like I say, it was to sell T-shirts, you know, now that's like fucking number yeah. 62 on the list. You know what I right. mean? We, we enjoy right. yes. the, the young guys that are getting motivated, right, to do this. We enjoy the fact that there's retired guys that are watching this that, you know, write us and say, hey, dude, I was lost. You know, I didn't have anything to list. You know, I enjoy this type of stuff. And I laugh my ass off and. So yep. that to us is just exactly was, what you said. You know, it's a good feeling, it, it, you know. I, and you're right. And I, and when I told you on the phone too, I said, you know, what you guys are doing for the fire service is, you know, this is this is a paramount instrumental thing, you know. And, and for any of you guys out there that watch this show or your buddies watching, you break the balls. Oh, you're a gonger. You're this. You're that. I'll tell you what, motherfucker. Why don't you sit down one day and be a man, all right, and listen to what some of these guys that come on this podcast have to say. Okay, because one verb or one sentence that a person says may strike you where it needs to be struck. Okay, and to make a change in your life, whether it be for your health or even in the job, because be, this is not a career; it's a lifestyle. This is going to kill you. You want to fuck around and find out? You will, and you're going to get mm. dead. Look, every every year we talked about earlier in the before we came on the air was, you know, the, from November to December, the fire service suffers tragedy. It's just this one of those things. You know, we just have a brother up there in your place, you know, from from rescue, rescue too. too. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And and the two brothers that were killed over in Pennsylvania, at the house, yeah. you know, and uh, you, you got to. Hey, man, look, this is not a safe job. It never was. You're never going to take the risk out of being a fireman. You can mm -hmm. analyze risk all you want. You can open up all the books you want. At the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, it is dangerous. Period. End of story. And if you don't think it's for you, then I'm telling you, you, you can't be the weakest link on the fire ground because therefore the fire ground's as strong as you are. And that's going to not be beneficial for you or any of the people on there that in particular, the public in which you're there to serve. And, um, you know, get with it, man, get fucking with it, you know, and get yourself squared away both mentally. And if you need help mentally, man, come on, man up, you know, make a phone call, talk to a fella. I, I will say this. Um, someone reached out to me on that level with the mental health thing because we did a mental health show recently. I talked a lot about trauma. As a person, you know, who, who's not been in this, you could still experience that. Absolutely. Uh, in your life in multiple ways. So I was able to get on the phone with a guy for about an hour and point him towards uh, a therapist. And, you know, it, it's, you know, it, if you don't want to, 
listen, we live in a we live in a world. It, it, you don't even have to say man up. You know, it's forget about manning up, man. It's just do something for yourself. It's the same. If you might you might love lifting weights, it's the same thing that you do for your mind and for your spirit mm-hmm. when you when you work on your mental yeah. health. So yeah. um, definitely, it's very triggering. Oh yeah, it's very triggering. Uh, <laughs> but no, oh, but, it's true. It's true. Hold on. I a, wanted to say this, it. Cap. Before, so not only did you marry up, not only is she the rock, not only is she incredibly good looking. Up, oh, he shoots here guns too. For God's sake! Oh, Are you kidding me? Here it Where comes. is it, Petey? I got it. Here it is, coming up. <laughs> hold on. Ooh, there she is. She's running the AR Look like a champ. Look at the stance. She's yep. real leaned in. She's got her forward uh, shoulder in the forward position. Yep. Look how little the gun's pushing her back, Lou. That's how you know. If the yeah, gun's yeah, pushing I you back, that. then it's no good. Yeah, she's nice. She's a regular Annie Oakley right there. How many, how many acres you own over there? What do you got going on? I got there? so uh, we moved down to Tennessee. I'm down here in East Tennessee. I, I bought eight acres uh, about seven, eight months ago. And uh, that property right there, uh, I'm shooting on a, a friend of mine who's a retired Green Beret, and that's his range. That's range 51 up here in Roan Mountain. Nice. And so I just I, I got to met this gentleman out there. He's a Green Beret out of Third Special Forces Group. And uh, so I was out there shooting, and I competed in a uh, tactical skirmish shoot out there on his range back in October. And uh, and I was and I'll tell you what, man, you know, in Eastern Tennessee, there is a massive population of retired uh, soft personnel, yeah. from SEALs to MARSOC to Green Beret. And uh, I was shooting against those guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, but let me was tell it you. The, was it the tactical games that you no, did? No, it wasn't or? tactical. It's not the tactical games. However, right. I will be I will be going into them. But this was a tactical oh, skirmish, yeah, yeah, yeah. a 12, 12 <laughs> place to shoot. Um, but yeah, Excited. still phenomenal. Oh, come on. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like to hear the lem- I like to hear the lamentation of the women who watch my enemy fall before me. Uh, why don't we do a quick break for a sec, guys? Um, Khalid. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me find Khalid because he's the one who bought it before Dad. Khalid. You know the guy who popped Khalid. I uh, love the guy who popped the oh, lead. That guy's only a on this show, genius. baby. Only on this show. He's Should a fucking genius. Better than that. What's better than that? Nothing's oh, better than the guy. Yeah, the guy who uh, who popped Khalid is a fucking genius. But, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know that we uh, work with the First Responder Center for Ooh. Excellence, and uh, what they do is there is that they're a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the lives and livelihoods of first responders. Their education and research initiatives aim to bring greater awareness and understanding to the challenges of the health, safety, and well-being of firefighters, EMS personnel, and other first responders. The goal is to reduce line-of-duty injuries and deaths, as well as occupational illnesses. Their goal, guys, is to keep you alive. You got it? So they're an affiliate of the National Fire, Fallen, Fire, Fire, Fallen Firefighter Foundation. And today's old-school health and safety tip of the day is very short and sweet. All right. It's make a New Year's resolution to best protect yourself from harmful fire ground contaminants. Now, I just got to say, we've been beating this horse, right, for months now. Right. Right, Kev? Yep. But it, it, you can put that in the purview, right? Like to say, all right, I'm going to add a new routine in my routine when I get back from a fire. All right. Clean sure. up, decon, get keep your stuff in the gear bag away, away from your vehicle, away from your home. All the yeah. stuff that we've been telling these guys over the last bunch of months. Yeah, don't throw your bunker gear in the back of the car where you bring you put your kids in, you know, in the in the kids' seats, you know, bring all those contaminants home to them. There's certain things you could do, and like like the captain said before, man, what you have left after you retire is a very short time. So you want to make the most of it. Protect yourself do, while man. you're on the job. Louis got deer to kill. 
uh, you know, you get the, a lot of a lot of fish to catch, a lot of golf balls to hit. You know, I got a lot of engraving to do that Lou changed. Me <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so, you know, stay around, keep yourself healthy, oh, be around a don't while. Do this to me, don't right? make me laugh when my lungs are falling apart. But anyway, guys, head on over to the first responder center.org, or if you're watching this right now on your TV, take your phone out, point your camera at that squiggly line on the right, the QRF code on the right side of the screen. Uh, and uh, it'll take you right there. Um, so, guys, thank you for uh, thank you yes. for being sponsored of the show, First Responder Center. We appreciate you. Uh, All right, Cap. Somebody wants to know how you got the name Stuntman. Thank you, <laughs> boy. That, that just means this man has gone through some windows. I feel it. No, feel no, it. no. That it, it's uh, so. Years ago, uh, we were out at FDIC, and uh, my buddy Wade and I. With, we were at Safety and Survival, our company, and we were doing a hot class. And so we had got done doing our program. We go back to the hotel and get cleaned up, go out and grab something to eat. So my buddy Wade and I, we got you know cleaned up a little bit quicker than the other guys. And flyers were on at the time. And uh, you'll Ooh, enjoy this story. Never though. heard of them. The, the flyers got flyers. squashed, flyers. squashed at this, in this playoff game like 10 nothing by the Penguins. So anyway, we're sitting there. The fellas start pouring in. And uh, – you know, all of our guys, and we had this massive round table. And as time goes on, this, this one guy says, Oh man, uh, so and so is going to show up. He's coming in, he's got you know, all the calendar girls with him, you know, this and that. And I'm like, You know, whatever, I don't give a fuck. So, you know, they come in, and you know, it's like, whatever, but anyway, <laughs> you know, it's like, whatever, yeah, and. So I'm sitting there, and the, the, there's, there's one that's sitting near me, whatever, like that. And she's like, oh, so where are you a fireman at? I said, no, I'm not a fireman. And she goes, oh, you're not a fireman? We do it out here at FDIC. And they're like, you know, all cocky and everything. I said, I'm out here seeing my friends. You know, I said, these are my buddies, and I grew up with them. So I was I was close to the area, and I was doing some work out here. And, you know, they called me. I said, hey, man, I want to come out and, you know, I have a couple of beers with you. She's like, oh, well, you know, what do you do? I said, ah, I'm in the motion picture industry. <laughs> And, uh, you know, right away, like the three attitude 40, changed. Three or 40s women are like, oh, let me get the point industry. Like that. I'm like, you know what, man? I'm looking at them. I'm like, you know, compared to the bolt ons that you have and all this other crap that's going on, okay? Are you a fireman? You know, so let me ask you that question. All right. So then, you know, they're like, all right, well, if you're not a fireman, what do you do? I said, well, you know, I'm a Hollywood stuntman. <laughs> and. <laughs> So I start, I start laughing and I said, so I'm sitting there stone faced. Right. And I'm saying what well, I'm not. Tell me. You know? And, you know, I'm looking at him like, well, you, I, I asked you what you do for a living. You said you're a fireman. Did you hear me jump around? So no, you're not. You're this or that, blah, blah, blah. I said, but yet you asked me, I'll tell you what I do. And then you laugh at me. Now all of a sudden they're like, well, <laughs> what, well, what, well, what were you doing? I said, well, I was working in Chicago. I was doing a, a, a movie in Chicago. Uh, so I was a stunt double for an actor for an action action movie coming out, and uh, that's awesome. So she says, "Well, what, what's this? What what movie is it?" I said, uh, "Do you ever hear of the Expendables?" And she's like, oh, "Yeah, was Stallone on it?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "This is the Expendables too." I said, uh, she was, "And you were like?" I said, "Yeah, I was a stunt man in that movie." I said, "I was Randy Couture's stunt double," and she was like, <laughs> "She's like, he's a." Freaking, he's Randy Couture. You look just like him. He's Randy Couture. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Reel him in. Reel him in. I'm like, I got like nine fish on this hook, right? So, and, and they're like, oh, my God. So what other movies were you in? So now I'm like, oh, oh God. Now I, I got to pull this out of my ass. So this is what I do. I go, all right. Well, I said, uh, yeah, I did a lot of like green screen and cable work in the Harry Potter movies, you know, with the flying dudes and all that shit with the fight. I never saw Harry Potter in my fucking life. I know. <laughs> so I explained that, you know, and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. You know? And I said, like, you know, Fast and Furious, I did some driving work and blah, blah, blah. They're like, I can't believe it. I'm actually talking to a real stuntman. I said, yeah. And if you believe that, my, my footprints are the first on the lunar surface and not Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I said, <laughs> So I go, I said, of I'm a fucking fireman. And, it, and the one guy goes, what do you mean by the lunar surface? Oh, my God. <laughs> Sounds like, uh, you know, when I was younger, that's my type right there, Cap. You know what right? I mean? Oh, oh that's Sharp as a bowling ball. That's it. <laughs> Amazing. No, that's, that's where the stunt man that's came That's pretty from. funny. Yeah. Cool, so, so we uh, Yeah, we I think it's that time. Yep. 
All right. Well, you guys all know this time of day. It's our Here favorite time of day. It's I don't care. What, 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 what better could he say, bro? He's already stole the show. Holy no, no, God. no. I have a feeling he's going to even all right. impress all right. further. So no, let's no. let the man talk. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the time. It's time for the old school tip of the day. Day, day. day. Take it away, Cap. So I never kind of – oh, there we go. Um as a, as a tip of the day, and, and for it to say old school, it's unbelievable that I'm actually, you know, considered like an old school guy. But here, here it goes. Um, so this is like a tip, not just for young guys, but for everybody, you know, love the job. OK, you know, like I, I said earlier, you know, I lived a little boy's dream. I had the opportunity to literally live a little boy's dream. So all I ever want to do is be a fireman and, you know, accomplish that goal in the city of Camden and like I did. That was the ultimate goal for me. It was the major leagues of, of firefighting for me. And, uh, you know, I loved every second of it. I loved all the men that I had the opportunity to work with. And there's one thing that I, if there's, that I could share with everybody and hopefully, you know, it resonates with some of you guys out there is, and like you young guys, don't be ashamed to be eager to go get training. Even if you unfortunately have to pay out of your pocket, do it. Because there's one thing that I like to, that I always saw in young some young guys. And I think, I guess, maybe I could use myself as the example was, and it's the word is contagious. Be contagious. Okay. Be contagious. Be that go-getter. Be the first in line. Be the first to, person to be out there washing the rig, checking the rig, checking the equipment, uh, you know, making sure that your equipment is ready to rock, is ready to go to work that day. In particular, the SCBA. Your SCBA is the M16. Uh, it would be for the soldier is what your SCBA is to you. It either kill you or it will save your life. To have that pride in the job, the pride in yourself, but to be contagious because the more that a reputation starts to get out that you're you know, a go-getter, a hard charger, somebody that's into the job, that listens, that pays attention, that goes after it, you're going to be a contagious person and more people are going to want to gravitate to you. Therefore, now you're going to start making a, a, a cell of people. Okay. So you see what you're doing now. You can metastasize that positivity into the department and more and more people are going to see from maybe other battalions or other companies. And they're going to say, well, man, what, what the hell are those guys doing now? Keep in mind, uh, jealousy and envy, they're everywhere and they're in the fire service too. Okay. And the one big thing is, and I'll, in the words of Freddie, the fog Shiro from the Philadelphia Flyers coach in the seventies at the Stanley cup champions, was this to avoid criticism say nothing do nothing and be nothing don't be that okay you want to do something stand up go forward all right you want to say something say it if you're wrong then man you just man up and say hey man i was wrong about that you know this is what it said and i'm sorry about it okay but to avoid criticism anybody can sit on your ass your whole career and be a nobody get outside the four walls of your firehouse because it's a big world out there, in particular the fire service world. A lot of great guys out there. There's a lot of encyclopedias of knowledge out there that are, you know, waiting to give you information because you're going to be the artery of information at one point in time in your career. So be contagious. All right. And get out there, get on the rig, kick some ass. It's a dangerous job. I'm not going to tell you to be safe because it's not a safe job. All right. But uh, kick some ass, love the job, love your family. Okay. Your family time is very, very important. All right. So kick some ass, fellas. Nice. Oh, snap. Sorry. Ooh, I pulled happened? him off the screen. Oh, all right. There he is. He's, 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 when, when I was talking to the captain and he had mentioned that we were bullshitting about, uh -huh. you know, we, we get off topic when we're talking and uh, we're talking about coming on the show. And he said something like, you know, what I talk about with the guys, you know, digging to China, and he's mentioned something about being contagious. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That <laughs> is just shit <laughs> right there, bro. Don't tell yeah, me anymore. Man. That is, that's, that's it right there. And he that's said that's awesome. what he would normally tell people yeah. is to be contagious. Awesome. And mm -hmm. it is, just, is that not the truth? Yeah. It's I mean, 1000% you know, the truth. If you're doing something, yep. people are going to come over. They might start drilling with you. They might start checking the rig. They might start doing something. It, it yeah. really is a contagious thing. It really yep. is. And, 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 and vice versa. Yes. You know, you come in, you see a guy laying on the couch. Next thing you know, you're sitting on the couch. Yeah. Next yeah. Thing you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? Yep. It's the yep. truth. All right. So That's I don't true. know if you guys used to watch, what was that? X Factor or American Idol? What, what's the guy with the uh, British guy? Uh, uh, right? never, uh, American Idol. American Idol. Well, he never stands up and it gives anybody applause unless you're really, really good. So, dude, I, I got to do it now. 
Oh, his crotch. There is his crotch. <laughs> Good job, Cap. You threw yeah, so Cap. much out there so fast. I was like, this is the best show we've ever done. I appreciate it, it's a damn out. good show, Cap, and you're you know you're you really hit so many levels tonight. Uh, I you know I, I really appreciate it. You went deeper than just the fire stories. You you hit the culture. You hit the service. You hit honor. You hit what being an American is for crying out loud. So uh, I can't. And thank you moved you to enough. Tennessee. God bless you. Yeah, yeah I gotta <laughs> move to. I gotta what, tell me. Tell me, Papa, what's freedom like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to. I gotta get the fuck away from this. It, it tastes real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No doubt. I got to get to a free state. Oh, great job. Thanks, Scott. Well, hey, great man. Job. Listen, man. Guys, oh, it's, it's really, it. really uh, my privilege to be on the show. I really appreciate you guys inviting me on. Our hours, Cap. And, uh, well, you, you know, will be back on. And the call uh, to the hey, bullpen, I, we got to have him back it. on. I really yeah. do. And, yeah. you know, like I said before, I said to Lou on the phone, but I'll, I'll tell you now, man, you guys, you know, forward is the motion, man. You know, forward is the motion. And, uh you know, if you're not getting criticism, you ain't doing anything right. You know ah, what I mean? And, uh, I like it. you know, fuck them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, bottom line is this, man. We're, you're, you're helping people. You know, you're helping people. And, and Pete, you said something earlier about people have trauma. If you ever watch a podcast and you want to watch something that's really, you know, awesome, is the Sean Ryan show. I love that and, show, man. Right? Right? So, so good. He, he was a he's a former SEAL. I have a lot of friends in the SEAL community, and um, this guy was an operator for a number of years. But he just recently had a fellow on that was from the Delta unit, Kyle he, uh, he, uh, yeah. Kyle Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, and uh, he he said what you just said, Pete. He says, you know, everybody has personal trauma, not just firemen, cops, military guys. We all do, right? So, be an American, you know, and uh, brother up, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, help each other, man. That's what we're about. Them stars and stripes, and them white and white and red stripes. That's what it means, baby. You know what we, I mean? We are a community, um, not just the fire community, but we need to be more of a community, uh, one hundred percent. And you're right about that. We've lost our sense of community as Americans. You know, now we are. Oh well, that's a red state or a blue state, and all this bullshit. Like, yeah. Yeah, fuck all that. That that's yeah. how they've divided us, man. Well, that's man. what they want to do to divide. That's, that's what they right. want. You know, and here's the thing, man. And you know, fire service in particular, because that's what we are, fellas. You know, we are the domestic defense. Yeah. Okay. We are that. So you know, you we have got to be on point. We got to be ready for battle every day. The fires are going to come. The emergency incidents are going to come, and the public out there. You know, listen, man. It's what it's about. They're number one. Get out there, be professional, get get smart, get educated, get your hands on tools. And again, be contagious, man. Be contagious. Yeah, man. Pete loves getting his hands on tools, Cap. I'll just I love that. I put, <laughs> oh, I put all the tools, tools everywhere. Oh, tools. Oh, <laughs> all right. So the uh, guys are saying Merry yeah. Christmas. You know, we gotta be doing a Christmas show on Thursday. I All mean, right, we're gonna so, do we're gonna, we're gonna do a cock lofts and cocktails. We'll make it as Christmassy as we'll we can. We'll make it festive. And if you have questions and you want to get on the air and say them live, send them to me at Coop's Podcast. All right, hold at on. Gmail. I'm gonna get email. Email. Start doing yeah. all that shit. We have a shout out. Uh, yeah, Cap, just hang with us uh, yeah. till the end. All right. Yeah, um, we'll say our goodbyes after. So obviously, uh, in New York, I'll just read the uh, the article here from Afty and Y. The New York City firefighter married father of two who was hurt in a training accident at his firehouse earlier this week. Will not survive his injuries. His family has opted to donate his organs. Uh, but this was announced on Friday. William Moon II, a 20-year veteran, FDNY, fell 20 feet, preparing for a drill at the firehouse in Brooklyn shortly before noon. He suffered a serious head injury and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Uh... I'm not going to go into the mayor and all that stuff. His family has decided to donate his organs to save lives of others. Moon was 47 years old. He's from Islip, Long Island, where he was a resident. He's survived by his wife, Christina, and their two children. So we're going to do the fives. But I just wanted to say, I got this text today, and I don't know if this is 1,000% true, but it comes from my good friend, uh, and this was a text. Gentlemen, just wanted to inform you today uh, – that my buddy, retired Lieutenant Terrence Jordan, will be receiving a double lung transplant uh, 
He was in ladder 107. He's a great friend and outstanding firefighter. He will be receiving these organs from William Moon. God bless Billy Moon and the Moon family out of this terrible tragedy. Billy would be able to give the gift of life to a fellow firefighter, the ultimate Christmas miracle. For anyone out there that doesn't believe there is a God, I think it's time you start. Mm. So, Amen. All right, so I'm going to give the five bells. Billy Moon. <clears throat> Tragic. What a shame. <laughs> and it's what, what goes back to what Brian was saying just a short while ago, you know, um, this job will kill you and it'll kill you in all kinds of ways. So mm -hmm. take it fucking serious. Yeah. Yep. God bless his family and all the brothers up there. You know, we're, 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 we're with you. It's, it's pain. It, Pray for those kids, man. Holy yep. shit. Yep. All right, Petey. Do your thing, brother. All right. Um, never easy doing this shit after one of those. I'm going to make it quick anyway tonight, guys, real fast. I'm going to breeze right through this. All right. So, uh, guys, listen to us on all the audio players, everything. We're on everything. Download us there. You can listen to the show as well as watching the show. If you're watching here, hit that like, subscribe, share button over here at youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience. All right, guys. Uh, Instagram, we're at Salty Dog Inc. Please follow us there. GettingSaltyApparel.com, you guys. We have all the uh, coolest firefighter apparel and accessories in the game. Thank you to everyone in the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, as always. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I've been thinking about setting up a Patreon, uh, maybe with some uh, extras. But uh, we'll think about doing that uh, another time. I'm going to talk to the boys about it. Maybe we'll do that. and We'll do some extras with our guests. Uh, Facebook guys, getting salty fans. Uh, if you're on there, we're 50,000 plus strong on the getting salty fans page. Um, and, uh, you could, you could get all the latest news for the show on there. And also just, uh, some great community stuff, really wonderful place we built up there. Um, and we, it's that we didn't even start it. You guys did. So follow it there. Getting salty ads at gmail.com. If you guys want to advertise with the show, um, if anyone is listening, we are a direct line to firefighting. Uh, if, you know, I know you don't like the term, Brian, but the f entire first responder sort of world, uh, you know, fire, firefighting, uh, police, you know, all that. So get in there, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, getting salty experience at gmail.com guys getting salty experience at gmail.com for any general show questions coobs podcast at gmail.com for all the content you guys want to contribute to the uh cocklofts and cocktails show if you want to show your family of firefighters you want to show your rig photos your helmet cam footage or someone else's helmet cam footage just give us the story along with it you maybe saw something cool on youtube that we should show shoot us that uh also guys um uh, Shoot me an email. I don't have it up right now, but getting salty Pete at gmail.com. If you want to nominate a salty, crusty, awesome firefighter that you know whose contact information you have to help us get on the show. Uh, we've gotten some great submissions so far. Uh, we'd love to hear more because guess what? We are a big community. We are a big family. We're not just New York based. We're not just FDNY guys. We are a global show. Uh, we've gotten some submissions from Wales. We got submissions from other places. So uh, Germany. Uh, so listen, shoot us, uh, shoot us some more info, man. We want to see you guys out there because uh, we respect everybody in that, especially in the fire service. Uh, so hit hit us up, guys. Truly, we'd love to see it. Uh, and that, my friends, is all the news that's fit to print. Thank you, Artie Workle in the yep. chat there. Super chat. Oh, thank man, you, Artie, Artie Workle. Thank you, buddy. Love me Been with us Artie forever. Workle. Yeah, Artie's man. been with us forever, man. Yep. We love you, buddy. We really do. All right. Cat, Merry Christmas. Happy oh, holidays. Merry, yeah, Merry Christmas to you guys, Thanks man. Thanks for coming on. Really Merry appreciate Christmas. it. Great job. Really, really enjoyed the heck out of it. You guys, uh, I, you know, again, I, I really appreciate it, brothers. I really do, man. We appreciate and, uh, you. God bless on. all you guys and your families, man. And again, to all the brothers up there, you know, you know we're you. with you. Stay by your computer. We'll have you on again real soon. I see it. Yeah, don't, don't hang up yet. I no. see an opening. I see, a, I see an opening week. coming. <laughs> All right. All right, Petey. All right, guys.
uh take care and uh stay low and go merry christmas everybody we'll merry see you at the christmas, big one everybody yeah. merry christmas everybody and remember no one is coming it's up to us it's see you in the next one that's right wow.